Welcome back to the Art Cafe. This is episode 102. In this episode, I had a chance to talk with a good friend and also a great artist, Ben Morrow. Um, we talked about his book, as well as some of his experiences working in the film industry for the past 10 years. I just want to quickly apologize for my voice and little coughs happening here and there, um, recovering from the flu, so I hope that's not going to be too distracting. Anyway, have a great time with the episode. I hope you're going to like this one, and let's go. Good. It's been a while. Um, when was the last time we actually met in person? Um, uh, maybe like Lightbox, we saw each other. But I mean, you've been asking me for a long time to come on. But it, like, I was working on the graphic novel. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh, I'll, I want to wait until I have something cool and new to share or talk about. And then it's like, it took me like three more years than I thought. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that'll get you right like working on the personal projects like ah, oh, you know yeah. like i can do it in uh next year next year i'll definitely let's do it next year and then it's like oh no it's taking so much longer how much time it took you to actually pick that up like you know from a moment like oh i want to do this to a moment where like i'm definitely doing it to a moment where like after a while of saying that shit you know i'm ready to go <laughs> I think, well, because the original, like, robot design, the yellow kind of, or the orange robot, uh, was maybe, like, 2014. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, I, I really want to make my own thing. And I had kind of an idea when I was drawing it. And then I kept kind of thinking about it, but I start, kept working, you know, kept taking other jobs and kept take, working on a movie or a game or something. You're like, ah, I'll, I'll definitely do this. And then... You're like, okay, I'm definitely going to do it this year. 2015 is the year. And then it's like another movie comes in. You're like, oh, after the movie. And then it's like another year later. And you're like, <laughs> and, then, and then I think I was on Valerian or something. And I was just like, you know, like, fuck it. I'm just going to do it now. I know what page one looks like. I'm not going to have like six months to take off to like plan out the whole story right. and like figure out all the character arcs and stuff. And I was just like, I know what page one looks like and page two looks like. Let me just do it tonight, do it this week or whatever. And so I started doing that where it was like, I'm never going to have time to just take off. Uh, so I just fit it into my nights and weekends. Um, and after a while, you have a page done. And then after a while, it's two. And then right. a little while later, it's like, wow, I got 15 pages done. Um, but it just took that one day of just like, fuck it, starting now. Um, and I'll just figure it out as I go. Yeah, it's the most difficult part to start, right? Like to yeah. to go from a moment where you say, I'm, you know, I want to do this thing. It's a big undertaking. It's going to take a lot of time. And usually what yeah. we do is like we underestimate how much time it's actually going to take. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, like, it's just like, there's always an excuse. Oh, I'm working on this project. Oh, I like yeah. all this new films coming up, you know, Yeah. or all this new client that I always want to work with, or like, yeah. I need a yep. vacation. Or I need some time with yep. family. <laughs> like, all those there's things. always, there's always like, the coolest dream job that can come up and what's the hardest yeah. thing is saying no like the amount of like cool projects <clears throat> that i said no to over the last like three or four years like that was tough man that was really tough to like like work with your friends on like some cool thing with an awesome director and you're just like mm -hmm. but that's like a year of pages i'm not gonna finish and i just gotta finish my thing and it's really the hardest thing and like you were saying though for anything we do, I, I definitely recommend however long you think it's going to take, like at least triple, <laughs> at least triple the amount of time. Like, like I remember the end of like 2016 or 2017, I was like, I'm definitely getting this done at Christmas. Like no problem. <laughs> and in, in like in my head, I really thought that I was like, I'm definitely getting this done. Right. Like I'm getting all these pages done. And then, you know, now it's like 2020 and I'm like, I still got 30 more to go. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh man. So how many um, how many uh, issues and pages? Like, what's the structure of the? Because this is a graphic novel, right? So it's a yeah. little so more I... than a, than your regular comic book. Yeah. So ideally, I just want to do like one big like. The plan initially was just like, don't say anything and just like drop the whole thing when it's you can buy it, but. Uh, Basically, all last year I was working with like copyright and trademark lawyers, and they're right. just like, "Here, here is the stru- here's the plan. This is how you have to do things." And they're like, "Oh, okay," and just a lot of things. I, you know, we just want to draw cool stuff and put it out there, but to make sure everything's protected and yeah. and yeah, and you're just like, "Oh, I didn't even think about any of that." And okay, so releasing those early chunks were basically just legal advice to this is how we need to do things in order to copyright this or do this, um, and so. It was kind of good though because the first thirty pages were maybe the most unfinished, or it's like it's like four years old, you know. Right. So I had to like go back and like touch a few things up, and it it was really good be- to finalize the first chunk and push it out there because it I was freaking out about that in the back of my head, like oh man, I still got a, f- a lot of that's still pretty old, and yeah, some of it was some of it I touched up, but a lot of it was like well that was what I could do at the time. I don't really want to. Otherwise, you're in a loop of just like, oh, the old stuff's not very good enough, and then you fix it, and then the new stuff's not good enough, and then you fix that, and then the old stuff's not as good as the new stuff, and then it's just like an endless loop of just, you're never going to finish anything. Yeah, that'll get you. Like, going back and looking at some of the, old, especially when the project is so long, um, yeah. and it takes you more than a couple of months, um, it's so easy to get boggled down into the, because like, you're always improving as you're going. Yeah. Yeah. Because just like the amount of practice, the amount of time, effort, like all of those things, uh, your brain kind of like automatically makes you want to do more and better. Um, but then you look back, yeah, like you look back at the early, um, early, early work, and it's like, what the hell? Like it's like the 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 early and the 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 late, the the difference is so striking. Um, yeah, I can I can totally see that happening. I remember I did um, I actually did a comic book when I was a kid. Uh, when I was a teenager, mm-hmm. uh, that was when I was learning uh, drawing, and um, I did like this fantasy comic book. Uh, in I, was, I think I was in high school, and literally, and I did it all in ink, like some crazy shit. Um, but from page one, I think it did like thirty-four pages, to page thirty-four, like the difference was so drastic. It was like at the yeah, end, it was like. Yeah. You know, back in the days, it like it looked cool to me, right? But like the difference in terms of like how it was drawn, um, the amount of details in the frame, it was just like, oh man, like, and that was ink, like I could not go back and fix it, right? Sure. Um, but um, I think for readers, funny. like that's, I think for readers, they that's like an interesting, even with stuff that we read, like the first issue or the first whatever is always a little rough, and you can see the artist getting better over time, and even like animes and things we watch, like Dragon Ball Z, like yeah. the first episodes, you're like, "Whoa, I didn't remember it looking like that." And then by the time you get to like the fifth season, you're like, "Whoa, it's so good!" It's just everyone improves, and um, it's hard to like for us to like put it out there when you're like, "I know I can do better," but I think it's good to just that was what I was capable of four years ago or whatever, and yeah, otherwise we never finish anything. That that's the hardest thing. It's just. Yeah, we're always improving, and it's hard to just like let it go and uh, say something's done. Um, yeah, how, you, how do you deal yeah, with that? Something like, to learn. How do you how do you go where with with the idea? Okay, this is good enough. Because I think I think for artists, uh, I at least to me, I find it like really difficult uh, yeah. to let go things. Um, that was the hardest, I think, just because it's a graphic novel, but my mindset is from like production work, and so like. Well, that's not finished for to hand to a director, but from a graphic novel standpoint or something like, I can't do production concept art to every panel. It'll take me like fifty years. Right. So it's like this is this image tells the story to the extent that I need, and it's consistent with everything else. And is this getting the point across on the context of the page? And is it progress pushing the story forward? And is it to a certain level of fidelity that I feel is okay. And you just kind of have to let it go. Cause earlier on I was like, it's not good enough. It's not good <laughs> enough. And I like read it. I read it one page like eight times and I'm like, Oh my God, I spent a month 
and just one page is not done. It's like a full right, like a full page, and I'm just like, I just got to come back to this. Like, if this is happening, like, I just need to stop. It's good enough for now. Maybe I'll be better later, and I'll fix it. Or mm-hmm. just having trouble figuring something out. But like, it was at a point where it was I was like that, where I took a big chunk of my time off to focus on it, and there was no the structure kind of went away, and I was just like. I'm, well, I'll just keep working on it until it's like perfect and it's never right. going to be perfect. Um, and so it just a few things clicked when I did that where it's like, nope, that's that completes this chunk of the story or this little page of the story. And now I got to move on. Mm-hmm. Um, did you write a script for your for your thing like for the for the Huxley or did you just like I had a I had an outline like I knew all the mm-hmm. plot points. Mm-hmm. Um, so I know like, OK, they go here and meet this character and then they go to this city or they go to this thing and then this happens. But there's like, I knew what happened, but I leave exactly how it happens right. to when I get there because each page takes so long. So I'm always, you have a lot of time to think about stuff. True. And, true. Um, what was interesting too, is like, I didn't want to write the ending cause I, <laughs> I like, I wanted this the ending, ending to be really satisfying. <laughs> yeah. So like I, there's a ton of time and game of Thrones was, uh, um, getting close to their ending, like I'm gonna wait to figure out the ending till the end of Game of Thrones because George R. R. Martin did such a great job setting up all these amazing character arcs and things. Like I want to see how he wrapped it up, and then that the ending happened on the show, and I was like, well, I definitely learned something. Dum, dum, uh, <laughs> I definitely learned, not what I, <laughs> I I learned something, but not what I expected. But I learned what not to do uh, for mine. So uh, again, everything everything we watch and things is like. Like, it's like training or like, uh, okay, what worked, what didn't work. Yeah. Um, what, what makes a satisfying ending? What, you know, how things all conclude. And um, that's probably the hardest part is just like, you have to wear so many hats. True. Um, but it's one of the few things that we can do as an individual, like making a movie or making all these things. Like, we need so many people involved. But, um, like I feel like a graphic novel is one of the few things that a single individual can still do quite a bit, but you still have to be like the writer, the director, the cinematographer, the production designer, yeah. the editor. The it is pretty over overwhelming for sure. Um, yeah, it gets to a point where you know there's so many pieces that you have to look into um, and think about that it's like really almost discouraging. Like oh, I don't want to, I don't want to do yeah. that anymore. You know, um, at first I think. But I feel like it becomes a really exciting challenge if you start thinking about it. Because, like, for our job, we're trained to, like, make the most beautiful image or moment and do a couple of those, you know? Like, we're trained to do these, like, one-shot kind of things. And maybe maybe we're on a movie for a year or something and we do a lot of that and develop a character and a costume and a gun or an alien or something um, or, like, an action scene. But we're usually told there's people above us that are figuring out the whole how it fits into the the bigger hole right but now we have to do that and uh it definitely took a little training like reading a bunch of storybooks and script books and mythology books and making sure it is fun to learn all that stuff but that is also why it took like three or four times longer than i expected because yeah. you're like oh i i know how to get this started but then then what happens uh i need this character which represents this to help push the story in this direction or something right. and so, so many things that we just you realize all the other people what other all the other people are doing on the movies and stuff we work on mm-hmm. and you're just like okay you have a lot more respect for everything else too um because from the outside we think it's so easy like oh i can do that i thought i could do it in a year and then you get into it and you're like oh my god this is so much work <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it get, it gets you there, man. Um, yeah, there's the, the, those elements of production that, as you said, like if you're working on the bigger show uh, in movies, and you've been working in movies for almost ten years now, or even more, right? Um, you have a director, you have producers, you have yeah. art. Like there's more than one art director, which are the people that are actually pro- more of like a producers in a way. I mean, they they kind of like. Uh, organized stuff and then you have a production designer you have a costume designer you have vfx supervisors you know like there is so many people involved in pre-production production production, uh even just before it goes filming and then when it goes filming 
when you're on the set you know how it works there's just so many people like who like who's doing what like I, yeah. I, i'm confused um but it's all like well structured and organized and when you get to witness that you, yeah as you said like you get a newfound respect to the yeah. craft itself but then you also realize there's because there are so many moving pieces like it makes sense why some movies are great and others are yeah. just so so and it's usually on the hands of i would say director and producers right just yeah. pick, picking the right people in the right spots and making sure that well not making sure but hoping in a way that their ability and craft will mesh with others and create this yeah. this, this new thing that that just becomes like uh, an art form. It's so difficult to do that. Um, and that, but it is also why it's hard to tell. Like, is this going to be a good movie? Right. Like, yeah. is this? It's like I don't know. Uh, there's some previs. I, maybe this will look good. Like same with like game development. You're like, for most of game development, it's just like a bunch of untextured things. You're like, is that what the game's going to look like? I, it's and so then like the last couple say. months, you're like, oh my god, like. It won all the wars or something. Yeah, 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 like, yeah exactly. Uh, yeah, we knew the whole time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like after the fact, like, yeah, of course we knew it's going to win. Like we put so much work in it. <laughs> but it's it's so crazy. Like it's just so many people need to be involved in all these things now. And yeah, yeah it's hard. To, it's just hard to see sometimes. Like you kind of just have to have like faith. And um, I think a lot of people ask, like, how did you keep working on something for so long? And I think because we're involved in this kind of stuff all the time. Right. We got our brain just gets structured to be like, well, on that movie, you know, we just it took that long. And there's a lot of times where we're just like, what the hell's going on? But we just kept working anyway. And you just kind of like, it's like a methodical just pace, like take it one day at a time. It's like this giant whale you need to eat, but you're just like, I'm just going to eat this little bite today. And yeah. I know by the end it'll get done. Um, and it's easier just to focus on that. Like, and then there's moments of planning, but then every day is just like, or every week is just like, I, I just got to do this today. Yeah. Um, yeah. It keeps the, keeps the panic down. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a completely different experience to work on someone else's show or project versus decide that you want to do your own and then like deal with everything that otherwise people are dealing, dealing for with, uh, for you. Right. Yeah. Um, that's why I asked, like, whether you wrote the this like the whole script with you know breaking down pages, which panel is going to be about what? Yeah, because that's I, you know, I'm not a, I'm not in the comic book industry. I've never worked in comic books, but fr from reading some of like the making of, of comics and graphic novels, um, you know, just by the fact that the, the bigger productions they do have writers. I think you have to time. for yeah. like, for like a Marvel or something. It's like a right. factory line. Like, I. The writer does this, then the editor breaks this down, and yeah. then the penciler does all the panels, then the inker does all the inks, and then the colorist does all the colors, and then it's done. You know, it's like a factory, just like a like a Ford factory building a Model T or something. Yeah. It's just like this person does that, that person does that, and we get it out the door every three months or something. True, but, um, then, but, but I think even like looking at the up and coming uh, like outers, outers, and like. Um, you know, even even like the legends of the industry, some of some of them started with the way where I just gonna draw and see where it's going. Yeah. You know, um, so I can totally see that. But you know, the, also the, the the one of the reasons I asked it is just like we are so different as human beings. Like uh, I know I know some people, some of some of uh, you know friends we actually share that when they start larger projects, uh, they usually you know want to have it like really structured. You know, this is uh, I gonna write this, or you know, come up with a sure. script. You know, make sure that everything's like there's a pre-production process, because like later on when I get into production, I know I have to like really hunker down and like really really do it really well. Sure, I need that structure to be there. But like we're so different because like we all know that those people that don't do that, they just like want to flow and and figure it out on the way. Uh, but it's also a learning experience, right? Like, yeah. I'm pretty sure as you're as you're writing and illustrating your books, like, you realizing the mistakes you're making, yeah. right? Like, um, like I feel like if I did that for the, for Huxley, like 
it would have been terrible because I was a terrible <laughs> writer at the beginning, you know, like four years ago, I've grown so much as a, like a storyteller over those four years. And if I had written it all and then locked it, it would have been awful. You know, yeah. it would have been, and I, and I'm like, well, I'm stuck with this terrible idea or terrible plot I had four years ago. Um, so quite a few things have changed or it's like, man, it just not like when I start, cause you, again, every page takes so long the way I'm doing it. And, I'm just like, you can kind of read through, the, you can basically kind of like watch the movie and you're like, what's missing, you know? Mm -hmm. Like I need this, in, something more interesting or something wild to get people, just to get people excited or, or what I, what haven't I seen before that I could put in this and right. start making an interesting experience that they can only get from this. Um, because, I mean, that's kind of the reason I want to do this too was I didn't want structure because you know, work with so much structure and stress a lot of the time. So it's like, right. I want this to be a fun thing for me. I want the style to be like the opposite of our production work. I don't <laughs> want to use any photos. I don't want to use like 3D. I'm kind of doing a little bit now that I'm getting to like Blender and all this stuff. But at the beginning, it was like, like, I want the opposite. I don't want to do something new and you know, fresh. Yeah. It's because for work, it just felt like our job was like going on Google and cutting <laughs> stuff together. And I'm like, yeah, I feel like I'm dying. Of, of I feel like I'm dying inside, and so like I needed <laughs> something for me, and this was like I wanted to be the opposite of everything, and having structure in that would also kind of ruin it for me at the beginning. So I probably could have got it done way faster if I was more structured. Sure, but, and it wouldn't have been fun for me. Yeah. So I don't. I don't mind that. Um, no, that I, it I totally see that. Um, yeah, it's like. When you work on personal projects, like sometimes, sometimes you just want to like, I just want to have fun with it, you know? Yeah. I don't want to have a deadline. I don't want to have, I don't, I don't want to deal with someone like sitting and telling me that I need to do something. I just want to be like free and creative and like let my mind express itself instead of like follow the rules that yeah. it always does day by day by day. Um, I guess again, like it, it comes down to artists. Um, uh, there's there's few few illustrators that I work in film industry that all they really want to do is to know that okay, I'm designing a doorknob. I'm gonna do it for five months. That's yeah. awesome. I'm totally down for that. You know, there are people like that that they just yeah they like want to have a task. Yeah, not having any stress of like the unknown. They know exactly yeah. what they got to do, and I, yeah, it is. It, it, it is interesting. It's, it was a learning experience of like, like, I just want pure freedom. But then those moments where I was like redoing the same page over and over again, I'm like, okay, maybe it's too much freedom. I need a little structure. <laughs> right. I need some kind of structure. This is too much freedom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's too much. It, it, it's to a point where it's like, I don't know what I'm doing and I'm redoing yeah. this and it's not progressing. I mean, yeah, it, yeah. it, it kind of is, but, but then it isn't, you know, like you're kind of stuck in one place. Um, so how many years it's been so far uh, or like how much time? So you've been 20, on this? 2020 is probably like year into year four now. Okay. And I thought it would take me one year, you know, but, uh, <laughs> but, but again, four years of like my free time outside of work. Yeah. So not like, but I did take little chunks of like, maybe I took like six month chunks off sometimes. Um, like just trying to really get a big chunk of it done, try to save money. Like I think at one point I like lived in my parents' basement for a couple months, like in my thirties. I'm like, I've got, I'm going to fucking do this, man. Like <laughs> no, no excuses. Like, Oh, I can't work on it. I got to take a job to pay rent. Like whatever I got to do to get it done. Right. Um, you know, cleaned out my bank account, taking time off a couple, like went broke a couple times. Uh, um, wh whatever, you know, whatever you got to do to, to do the thing you want to do, you know? Yeah, it's um, difficult, right? I mean, it's, it's tough. It's, it's tough. It's like, I mean, you don't have. Uh, I mean, you, I'm, you have a fiance, right? Um, uh, yeah, I'm, mar I'm married. Oh, yeah. you're married. Perfect. Uh, congratulations. Um, but you, you guys don't have kids yet. No, no, no. Yeah, like once you get kids, Not everything yet. completely changes. It, yeah. Um, but so I'm trying to do it now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, even like even like before you have kids, you know, you have a significant other. Uh, and you do want to cater a at least a little bit of time towards her. Um, but the, the, there is also work that you have to pay rent. Like you, yeah. you live in Seattle right now, right? Mm -hmm. Seattle area. 
it's not a it's not a cheap state either you know like no. california is probably like the most expensive right now in us i would say uh and san francisco san francisco sure I, I would yeah. never want to live in san francisco no way from from knowing what how how much it's changed <laughs> holy crap <laughs> yeah um it's insane but you know la it's kind of getting there as well uh yeah. it's getting like incredibly expensive so when you when you think about that like you know living costs and you know i guess someone will say like hey why don't you move like somewhere else like cheaper area yeah. it's like it's not that easy you know especially once you ha once you have kids they are in school yeah. like it's a it's a it's a large move and experience for because you have to think about them too like, they have yeah. friends they yeah. have like their their own habits and they they don't they don't under, especially when they are young they don't understand like why this is happening to me why i have to move yeah you know when i was a kid i had to move a couple of times i've been moving a lot uh in my life and it's never mm -hmm. been a pleasant experience yeah um yeah so you're, you, there is like dependencies that you're kind of like as you grow older you, you be become less rec reckless about your life yeah. decisions because you kind of have to you have to think about the future and life just gets more complicated like when we're, that's why i recommend like young artists starting out like we had so much free time when you're younger like yeah take especially risks. at the beginning of our career like you just had nothing to do and you could just draw all day and like learn <laughs> stuff all day. Like it's true. Th that's I've basically tried to been simplifying my life the last few years to try to get as close to that as possible. Just, it's just hard though, man. Like so much stuff gets, you just, it gets complicated. Like life gets, there's so many things that like, moving parts that get put into our life as we get older. And like, yeah, that pure freedom of youth is like so hard to go back to. So if anyone's starting out, just take advantage of not having any responsibilities and just, yeah don't rules your oyster <laughs> don't make an excuse of like i don't have time yeah. it's like if you don't have time now unless you become a millionaire overnight for whatever yeah. reason you're not gonna have time in the future it's gonna get worse usually that's what happens because like if you grow again you grow older and you realize that your life becomes more complex unless you you know there are some free spirits out there that sure that are like they just live a, live a way where life is really not complicated. I think my sure. friend Shadi is kind of like that. Shadi <laughs> Safadi, he's like the, yeah, yeah. the the freest spirit I've ever met. Meaning like he just not giving a fuck about anything, <laughs> you know. But <coughs> but he also there's also some um, prerequis prerequisites uh, of why he can do that. Uh, mm -hmm. you know not everyone can live that kind of life even if they want to or have a spirit to do that there's like yeah there's so many layers of complexity it kind of depends what you want want out of life too right. like i was in a studio for when i was at weta i was in a studio and just i just want to focus on work and then after that i wanted to just like explore the world so work was more like a secondary thing yeah when i was traveling for a couple of years yeah let's make and then it was like i want to actually sure you know uh we've been talking about the comic oh, oh it's just um as a reminder, where people can find uh, your your, oh, yeah. your, your uh, graphic novel so far, and I'm so probably just my website right. is the easiest way to just like read down ben and Mauro art station. You have to go to com. the sections. Mm -hmm. Yeah, benmarodesigning.com. Um, I put it on mobile. Uh, we talked about that a second earlier, but like Web I put it on mobile, too. and I didn't I didn't realize how big mobile was for like consuming comics. Right. Um, so I put it on webtoons and uh, tapas, which seem like the bigger ones, but gotcha. Because the format is like for a book, I don't think it works really well. I, I probably have to hire someone to like redo the panels because scrolling, people are just scrolling, you know, and they want to see like a big face or it like like when you start reading a couple of the web, the web comics, you just see there's like a certain way yeah, it's, it's done. It flows. Yeah, and I know what you mean. So I'd probably have to work with someone to like cut up my book mm -hmm. to work for mobile so, so probably the best have to do experience that. would be just go on your website and and read it yeah there. for now cool. yeah um the easiest for now until uh publishing and stuff later in the year yep so anyone who's listening because a uh, bunch of people are gonna watch this and a bunch of people are gonna listen to this benmorrowdesign.com <laughs> and then you can find it right at the top uh cool yeah let's actually get you familiar because we've been talking about the you know the, the your personal project mm -hmm. you know, i'm sure i'm sure we'll we'll get back to it uh some way uh somewhere somewhere sure. or another during the conversation um mm -hmm. but we might have a couple of listeners that are like who is this guy you know <laughs> sure <laughs> who is this ben morrow guy um and maybe let's let's introduce you a little bit um sure you know 
how did you get into the industry like what what got you to to become a designer um how did you get in the film industry and you've you've, sure. you've been in, you've been working in films way longer than actually i did um i joined film industry film industry i think a few years after you mm -hmm. actually and uh you've you've done some some big projects you know like elysium you, you worked with like neil yeah. Blomkamp quite a lot uh yeah. you, you've done quite a few films with weta you've done you know valerian mm -hmm. there's like if you look at the credits of ben morrow it's like yeah that guy worked that guy is a veteran almost you know of the film so let's uh yeah let's talk about that sure let's, let's yeah uh, how did you so... get in the industry like what 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 was you know the motivation? I think in, initially, like I, I grew up in Michigan, Rochester Hills, Michigan, and um, like I love I love video. Initially, I just I liked video games. You know, I, mm -hmm. I, I like movies too, but I really love like Halo and these kind of video games. And I was like, maybe I could do that for a living. And I started researching. And initially, I just wanted to be like a level, like building the architecture for like a game like Halo and go work for Bungie in Seattle or something. And so initially, I went to school out in Seattle at like a animation school, and after a couple of years, I was like, okay, I'm kind of more interested in design. And everyone who was like the artist I wanted to be was coming out of Art Center, like Scott Robertson and Craig Mullins and Sydney, all these guys came from Art Center. So I was like, well, I gotta, I gotta go where the information is, um, which led me to go down there for a couple of years to get training in industrial design and entertainment design, and after that. It's pretty easy because all your teachers are like art directors and stuff. And so I started working with Scott over summers on some books like Alien Race and these kind of things. And um, after that, I just started working in like Insomniac and local game companies and movie studios and stuff. And I met the owner of Weta, Richard Taylor, at Comic-Con, uh, Carlo Ariano, one of my teachers like grabbed me and was like, you got your portfolio and your special portfolio. Like I had a secret portfolio too. He's like, bring both of your, bring the secret one too. And he had me show it to him and how's, they were how's just like, Richard to you? Like, did you know who he is uh, before you met, you met him? Yeah. From like all the behind the scenes, like Lord of the Rings stuff. And right. I was just like, Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. How's, how's so, that experience to you? Cause I met him uh, when, <laughs> when we, me and Ash went to Weta. That was a couple of years ago already. Mm -hmm. Holy crap. The time's flying. Yeah, time uh, flies. It was <laughs> quite a surreal experience because, like, once you get to Weta and 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 we ended up being in, in a meeting, um, just uh, you know, hearing kind of like behind the scenes of how the the whole company works, mm -hmm. and we were like, "What the hell? Like, you guys are not just doing films. There's just like films is just yeah. like a small yeah. fraction almost yeah, yeah. of of the whole operation." So that was like, "Oh my god!" Like that. Richard, that that's I'm impressed. You know, like what you achieved with the company. Yeah. So it's it's tough. It's a tough business. I mean, yeah. like physical manufacturing is like the least profitable thing. So you just got to diversify and figure out right. other ways to keep the keep the beasts running. Um, but it was yeah, it was cool. It was intimidating, and <laughs> he he liked he liked what I had as a, like I was just a student at the time, and um, he was like, yeah, we're working, we're starting on the Hobbit. You know, maybe we'll be able to maybe we'll be able to use you for something and he said to keep in touch and gave me his card or whatever and right um every month i would just send an email of like new work like oh hey like a like a friendly like poke kind of thing i guess um and it was probably like a year of friendly mm -hmm. kind of emails every month mm -hmm. with like each time improving my work so showing i'm like just always getting better and all that kind of thing but it took a year of me really wanted to go down there and work to, to right. finally them having like, okay, I think we have a, some work for you. Like, um, let's get this started. But, you know, no, nothing happens overnight, you know, I, but I really wanted that experience. And so for me, it was worth the, um, the patience to wait that long. Um, and then after that, I just worked on, yeah, started on the Hobbit when Del Toro was there actually. Mm -hmm. And then the switch happened to Peter doing it. And then, Worked on Elysium and Chappie and uh, what else? Amazing Spider-Man Two, not the not the new one, the other, <laughs> the other new one. <laughs> not the uh, not um, the John Watts. Uh, a little bit of a little uh, bit on Man of Steel. A little bit on. They just work on so many things. Mortal Engines actually was one of the first things I worked on, and it took like ten years to finally come out. <laughs> oh wow, um, that's actually crazy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that was one of the first things I was like, oh my god, it's like steampunk, like industrial grunge tech thing like it's perfect right i think i worked on it for like eight months or something and then i think they kind of canned it and i was like oh man 
and I think internally they had been working on it a long time too. And then I thought it was just dead, and you know, like last year or whatever, it finally came out, and I was like, sweet, <laughs> finally. Yeah, that, pro- um, that that film did not make any waves whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is, but again, it's interesting. Like internally, and if you see all, saw all the work, like you would think it would be like the next Star Wars, like all the artwork, and <laughs> mm-hmm. I was just like, oh my god, this is amazing, and. You just you just never know. You just don't yeah. know. It can look good on paper, and all the art can be amazing, but it just won't connect, or it just doesn't click. You know, um, it's hard. Yeah. It's just hard to tell. It's not um, easy. It's definitely not easy. Yeah. Um, yeah. But after that, uh, after the wedding experience, I wanted to. It was like a lot of years working in house, so I wanted to travel. So I traveled for about three years. How many years working you at Wedding? Uh, about four. Four years. So it was like four years That's of just like time. nothing, nothing but work kind of thing. Right. And I was starting to feel like a little itchy feet and wanted to <laughs> see the world. And so I just figured out how to make sure to build up enough of an online presence that it wasn't too difficult mm-hmm. to get a freelance job. And um, luckily, Call of Duty Treyarch uh, wanted to work with me, and I was able to lock in some. You know, I think initially it was like a test, like a couple months, and after that, just like. Yeah, it's going what are the well. next couple of years looking like? And they just wanted to lock me in for a couple of years. And uh, that was pretty good, steady paying job t- and allowed me to travel. Um, and then after that, I wanted to settle down a bit more to work on the book and stuff. And I want to see it all. There's a ton of there's a ton of work in Seattle if I ever need to work and right. uh, started working on at 343 on Halo. So the thing I initially wanted to do didn't happen and then finally got caught up in movies and stuff and finally i'm back to the halo <laughs> <laughs> it only took like 13 years or something it, it works like that right like you, you have your your sort of like perception of what do you want to do with your life but yeah. then you quickly realize that you're not ready to make that step that some things have to happen along the way and some experiences ha- you, you have to go through um to get there eventually and it's also it's the kind timing, of funny though. right yeah it's kind of funny though because like when I was little I drew comics and then I wanted to work on Halo and like specifically the Forerunner architecture mm-hmm. and like after 14 years of working on stuff I'm basically making comics <laughs> and working on the Forerunner architecture <laughs> like the, the two things I was like wanted to do or was doing but it just took like right. yeah like 15 years to come back around I want to get to that however I was always curious um when you know when i've heard that you're leaving weta and you're gonna go and travel and you kind of you kind of touch upon this but i'm so curious about that topic i'm mm-hmm. not i'm not necessarily a kind of travel person i really travel very rarely um sure. but i do like i do like the experience of it right i don't like getting to places i, I like being in places obviously i think that's pretty much sure. pretty much everyone uh, but I'm curious, like, how did you uh, set yourself up to actually make that happen? You, you said, you know, you, you've built your online presence. Uh, mm-hmm. I want to kind of de- uh, go on a, a little bit of a deep dive into that. Because uh, I think that's a, always an ongoing question. Uh, that, and I think we can cover that uh, in, in that specific area. Where people ask, like, how do I, you know, how do I make myself more present online and get recognized, all that stuff. So I, I'm curious, like, if there is anything specific that you you had in mind or, or, or a plan or like what are, were you doing to actually get uh get yourself out there because like you worked four years in the studio and when you work on projects i mean film projects versus game projects are different and um, sure the turnaround is is much quicker in films yeah. uh and you know eventually i mean there's always a delay from the time you start on a project to the time yeah. it's released and you can you can actually show work um but it still it still seems more consistent than working in games and, and in games like some projects take ten years, and you have literally yeah. nothing to show for uh, during that time. Ten years and then they get canceled. <laughs> oh yeah, th- those 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 projects happens too, and that's a bummer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but like if you're in a studio environment, and I know it, I know it from my personal experience. When I was working in a studio, getting to have any freelance job was really difficult. Like. I, I, I didn't have a need to look for it because I was working in the studio. Mm-hmm. But I always was like itchy to like, hmm, what, what if like I had that freedom to work from home or, you know, work on my own dime? 
uh, what would that what, what would that be? But then you look at it like no one's reaching out. Like you know, I could I could try reaching out to people, but that's that's like that's a whole completely whole different story and the difficulty that comes with it. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's like how did you how did you get from that spot where it's difficult to get recognized or you know mm-hmm. see those those uh, um, opportunities uh, come in to a point where like I think I'm ready. You know, there's enough uh, chatter in my email box that I can leave and and start doing that instead. Uh, I think it's like anything. It's like like working out or something. It's like you're out of shape and then you need to work out to get in shape. It's like a daily, you know, you can't just go to the gym once and you're fit. Yeah. You know, it's like every day you got to go to the, you got to stay healthy. You got to eat healthy. You got to do the work. Yeah. It's like every day you got to do the same thing. And um, over time it. Or even like learning anything. Like I wanted to learn Blender, and at first I was like, "What the hell is this?" But you, even even just like learning learning one little thing a day, it adds up so fast over here. Like I know four hundred new things that all adds up. Right. Um, but so the same thing. It's like basically what you said was my like I'm always worried about stuff. So like I was like, okay, what if I work on this movie and it gets canceled and I can't show anything and I spent four years and I have nothing. Yeah. So that fear in the back of my head led me to, okay, every weekend I'm going to do a personal painting or a personal thing, whatever I was learning or doing that week, I'll keep that momentum going because by the end of the week they always want to send off or something. So you're like really building up, learning new stuff and presenting awesome work. And then instead of cooling down on the weekend, I would just like keep going, keep the steam going and just like, okay, I'll do one more for me. And so by Monday, I would have a cool thing for my portfolio. And again, if you do that once, it's not a big deal. But over like three years, that adds up to a a huge body of personal work that's mine that's pretty easy to get a job where I was uh, definitely strategically doing things where it's like, okay, I need to have characters. I need to have like robotics. I need to have environment. Like basically, all the things we would have to do for a movie or a game, mm-hmm. I would basically just like, okay, this month or this couple months, I'm going to focus on getting this part of my portfolio <coughs> or, or showing showing that I can do that to the world. Because right. again, everything's behind a curtain. So a lot of it was just strategically like, what are all the things needed for the jobs that people need? And basically making a big menu of like, look at all the things I can do. Because if you don't show people, like they, they don't know. Yeah. Um, even even when I was at Weta, like I was like, oh, I really want to work on creatures and you know the managers or whatever. I don't have anything in my portfolio that shows I can do that. Right. And they were just like, yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe. And so over the weekend, I would just learn ZBrush, sculpt some creature, and be like. Oh hey, here's something I did over the weekend. They're like, "Oh shit, I didn't know you could do that. You want to Yeah, yeah. You want to do the wolves on the movie?" I'm like <laughs> Yeah. Okay. But again, That's I was I was works. there, you know, I was there, but I still you still had to people just don't know if they don't see it. Yeah. So you have to you have to show them. Um, same thing with like getting hired. Like people can't hire an artist they don't know exists, you know. Yeah. No matter like I know a bunch of great artists who they don't want to promote them or they're like, I want people to find me. And it's like, that's just not the way the world works, man. Like, you gotta like, if imagine if Apple made like the new iPhone and they didn't promote it, they didn't make advertisements, you know, it's like, no one's going right. to buy this phone. They don't know exists. There are products so like, like that that go by the word of mouth, like, uh, yeah. or, you know, projects that people just discover and they just, they, ju- they just grow and become a thing. Sure. But it's usually, you know, I can't remember which it's probably a more of a rare, <laughs> it's very it's rare. Not- I've read this, this comment, book. You know. I can't remember the name of it. Uh, um, but the likelihood of something like the, the the whole premise of the point that I'm making was that in that book was that the likelihood of something uh, being discovered to a point where it becomes successful uh, if there's no marketing behind it whatsoever, yeah, um, is it has to be at least tenfold better than what currently exists already. Yeah, meaning like it has to be so innovative impressive or the quality of it is like undeniable um where where people are like holy crap did you see this thing you, you said it perfectly uh unless you show it uh nobody knows about it and yeah. you know when you work in film industry film industry is so weird 
uh, for, for, for that specific reason. Yeah. Because there's a lot of artists that joined uh, the union or in the art department, been working in film in like for years now and sometimes decades. And some of them are just amazing. They have yeah. zero presence online. And you like, I've never seen your work. Like, what the hell? Like, what's going on? Um, but those were different times when, when they were joining the union or being sure. discovered because there was like way less competition back then. And, yeah. and in film, yeah. most of the times you get hired because you already worked on, on the project with that specific yeah, yeah, director yeah. Yeah. or, you know, production designer. Like once you work on the show, you get to meet a director, production designer, art directors, producers, you know, sometimes even studio heads, um, they see yeah. the work on the wall and if something's striking for them, they were like, Oh, I'm going to write that down, write down that yeah. name because yeah. I really like it. Um, and then like, I, I think it was Steve Jung, um, who I like was one of like, almost like quote unquote mentors, uh, when I was mm -hmm. joining the union was telling me like everything about everything I need to know about the film industry. Basically, you know, I was like crazy. Okay, cool. That's, that was super helpful that he did that. But he said like, once you work on like three or four shows and you get to know the people you, you like working with, if they like you, you don't have to, you don't have to look for work anymore. They'll, they'll be, they'll be coming back and calling you. And that's basically what it, what it was like past five years. Uh, for me, even though like I've been, I've had stretches of time where I was out of the industry, I would still get like a production designer that I worked with like five years ago would reach out like, yeah, Man, we haven't yeah, worked sure. in like in years. I'm curious if you're available, you know, I haven't seen, you know, I, I've seen your, you know, I've seen you've been doing some cool stuff. Um, but yeah, unless, unless they just like, unless you're promoting yourself, like, especially nowadays with all the chatter and like, there's so much competition. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's way harder now. Yeah. Like you're saying, like, it's, there's so much stuff out there. Like, I don't know if what I did will work now. Um, right. Like, I know, I know some artists who would ask me for advice and I'm not sure if they're able to do it as easily as I was able to do it just because there's so many artists and they're all trying to push rates down just because they all want to get in the industry. So it might be harder to do it, but it's still possible. I mean, if you live really inexpensive places and you still have pretty decent rates you can buy a lot of time for yourself um yeah but you did that i'm not sure if cool i could do now so, uh, sorry to interrupt you but i i, yeah. I, I we're i don't want to uh, um lose that thought I, I remember you did that breakdown actually that was a bunch of years ago you know because mm -hmm. that's what people ask like how much you make in this industry you know what what yeah. should i charge and like you ask people you ask them like how how much you're charging and they say like oh it's this and you're like what the hell, dude? Like, why? You could work at McDonald's and have less stress, you know, for yeah. that money. And uh, that was good. I, I'm pretty sure, like, if you if you look online, Ben Morrow, like, free, 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 freelance rates, yeah. whatever. You, I think there's a, a section on my website that I still have that, um, like, resources, resources or something. Yeah. I still have, like, the rates for oh, contractors or freelancers or yeah. something. But that's just for design. Like, mm. I, I had some, like, some people who are modelers or something. I'm like, I don't know. I'm not an expert in rates for that stuff. Like this is just for like being a designer on a movie or right. something. Um, because it is, it is different like a VFX artist versus this role or that role. Um, I'm not, not an expert on those. Uh, Glassdoor also helps as well, yeah. which has been pretty awesome the last couple of years. I think when I did that, there was no like Glassdoor or something. Um, I, I so feel now there's like Glassdoor, decent... it does not reflect, uh, the the reality i mean it, re it reflects the, that's true the that's most true. of it but i think it's still like undervaluing some of the it, i definitely think it's undervaluing yeah, some the, of, the rates and stuff yeah, some, I, I think it takes like a real average or even like a low end of what the industry yeah. is like really yeah. charging um and uh yeah i always like looked at i looked at the companies i worked for and i know how much my friends were making yeah because word of the mouth obviously yeah um and then I would look at Glassdoor. Like, I'm curious if it's accurate. It's like, there's no way they're making that little, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I do definitely, for sure. Um, but in some cases, another... it was accurate, actually. So, yeah, yeah I yeah. guess it's a mix. Like, like with everything, you have to take it with a grain of salt. But it's an important point you mentioned. Like, right now, and even, even back then, and that was like, what, seven or six, seven years ago? Six years ago almost, right? When you left? Yeah. 
um, it, like the 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 industry and the um, and the the landscape was completely different for mm -hmm. for promoting yourself. Like you, you had Facebook most mostly Facebook, right? You had some of yeah. the Instagram kind of popping up. Basically, any Twitter, sort of it. yeah, and just the normal way. I think it was still like CG Hub back then, and right. then uh, I mean like DeviantArt and CG Society and all these things. Like when I was starting, it was just like put your work on everything. You just don't know where people are gonna look. I've had so many jobs from DeviantArt, <laughs> like just because they're still like old school guys that just yeah. Oh yeah, DeviantArt. That's where art is, you know. And and then because it's like a legacy from from DeviantArt. Yeah, yeah. And because it's like an older legacy website. The Google search results have pop. I'm surprised how much like DeviantArt kind of websites still pop up really high on like image search results. So like, don't dismiss putting your work somewhere because it, you think it's below you or something. Like, just everywhere, just put yeah, it. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's DeviantArt is still where like one of the biggest, it. right? Like, uh, I think ArtStation yeah, surpassed DeviantArt maybe recently, um, mm -hmm. but. You know, I remember looking at the numbers uh, even a couple of years ago. I was like, wow, I didn't know DeviantArt is that big, you know? And yeah, I mean, it's like, crazy. And big, it, big. it's still, I still think the Google search results, like, not like maybe the news or whatever, but like the actual images that pop mm -hmm. up, I still see DeviantArt is like some of the top of my things. And I'm just like, oh, okay, okay I'll, I guess I'll keep putting right. stuff on there. Um it's just interesting. Again, it's just more of a technical analysis of like, we have to do our work, but it's just analyzing how information gets out there and spreads and how you can <clears throat> control that. I think if I think a good way to cut through it is maybe YouTube videos as well. The free stuff just gets shared so yeah. much now that can, that can be helpful. Um, I think now Instagram is, they've changed the algorithm. So if you want the same kind of reach we had at the beginning, you basically just got to pay for ads. <laughs> That's true. Unfortunately, unfortunately, you know, we were lucky to have our work get spread out easier at the beginning, but yeah. Um, and you get, it could be helpful to, it could be helpful to hop on new like TikTok or something, hop on all these new things where the algorithm is good. I'm curious um, about TikTok actually, you know, like when you, when you browse through, it's like, it's basically like a, a, a a teenage version, like current teenage version of of um of Vine, sort yeah, of like a yeah. sort of like a spin off of it. Uh, I'll be curious. Like I've seen I've seen a couple of artists uh, doing something there, but it's mostly like behind the scenes. You know, like hey, like I'm preparing yeah. for painting and blah blah blah, or like yeah, showing stuff. some work. It's a done. totally different. It's, it's very different than making like. I'm not sure if like you have to. Yeah, it's like you have to become an entertainer, and I'm not sure if I want to do that. Right. Like it's I want to make cool. Um, I want to make cool stuff. You yeah. Know? And then that's another thing. Like with all these new avenues and things, it's easy to get sucked down a rabbit hole of like, oh, now I'm making funny videos on YouTube or something. It's like, but is that what I want to do? Right. Like, who am I? Like part of the traveling thing was like. Who am I? What do I want to do with my life? Where do I want to go? Like, what do, like, if all we put into our, if all we put into ourselves is like art on the internet, and then we just work at a studio and there's nothing else in our life, you kind of, I don't feel like that's going to lead to the most unique voice or the most unique perspective as an artist to right. put into your work. And so for me, traveling, I needed to fill up that life experience because I was not getting, you know, I'm just, I go home and I work and I go to work and I work and it's just over and over and over again. And you're not, there's no life. There's no life there. You right. Know? Yeah. Um, that's got to experience life and fill up that thing. So you have something to say and have a unique voice as a designer. If you just go to art station and consume art station and the couple ideas that float around, what, you know, why would someone hire you? when there's a thousand portfolios that look exactly the same, right? or you, every, everyone does the same 10 tutorials and everyone's portfolio, it's like, oh, I saw that John Mo tutorial too. I saw that John Wallen tutorial, spaceship thing. Like the same thing. Um, every portfolio looks exactly the same. And you're just like, why, how can you expect to charge fairly for your work when they can just say, nah, there's like 500 of you. I'll just get someone else who will work for $10 a day or something. You know? Yeah, right on the button, man. Like that's 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 just a sole, a sole description of of, of large uh, uh, art community pages, whether it's ArtStation, DeviantArt, you know, pick one. Even if you go on uh, Behance, like Behance it has its own sort of like more of a graphic design 
uh, mm-hmm. design, motion design kind of kind of uh, touch to it because that's what it was kind of made for uh, in the beginning, I would say. And when you look at it, look at the kind of work that's there, you know, you're going to have people, for instance, yeah, or like yeah. some of the better designers like, uh, you know, or like other famous designers like G-Monk and, you know, mm. um, Raul Marx, like all of those guys. Um, and and then you have an army, army of people that I just want to do this. And, you know, sometimes that's that's all they want to do. Like, you know, I'm not blaming people for trying to follow some, someone else's trends. Um, that might be your, your goal. You know, like I just want to mm. like do cool stuff. But to your point, it's like, if you are doing something, if you're only watching one one sort of like stream of of, of talk, sure. um, if you as, as you said, if you go on, on Art Station, there's almost a specific vibe of work that's there, sure. and usually it's set by few really prolific people that always explore and always want to change yeah. things up and learn something new or become like a specialist in one one domain, like Vitali, yeah. right? yeah yeah he's, he's untouchable like there's no other designer that i know that can produce the quality of work that he does in the yeah. speed that he does and uh and and be a, as reliable like you, you could say like oh i can hire like five people that are maybe not him yeah. uh but they'll be good enough for my project you never work with vitaly man like I, I to me working on the project with vitaly is so stressful because the output that he makes is just unbelievable. I had directors call me and say like, "Can you make as much work as Vitali?" I said, "No, you have to hire second Vitali if you want to have you want to do that, right?" Um I, I could say he could easily outperform like 3 4 designers, average designers. And you know, let's say let's say a, a rate of an average designer would be like $700 in film, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's like almost a you shouldn't ask for less if you're if you're going into like yeah, yeah union yeah. like if you're asking for less like what are you doing with your life man like don't do that um you so you get four of them that's what uh 2800 dollars a day mm-hmm. uh, hire vitali even if you pay him like 2k a day i, I don't yeah. know how what's his rate yeah. like i have no idea um i don't think it's 2k but even if you paid him that right dude he's gonna he's gonna smoke everyone yeah and the designs will be better. Right, exactly. And more consistent. Everything will be consistent. You got one voice. Um, it's I don't know. It's interesting, but it's it's tough though too because like I can see that as a good strategy if you're starting out. You just want to get your technical skills up, but then that step of like okay, technically my work looks professional, but I have no ideas and I have nothing to say. That's the jump that needs to happen right. for you to evolve and advance in your career. Just to have a unique perspective. However, like we we're saying about promoting yourself, the best thing that it seems to promote yourself or let your work reach a bigger audience is doing fan art. So you're kind of stuck in a vicious cycle of like, I want to get technically good. I want a lot of people to like and see my work. The thing that seems to be that people like and see my work is doing fan art because it gets shared on all these websites. If I do a picture of Spider Man, all these comic book websites are going to share it. Yeah. If I take an old design and update it, take an old like video game design, all the video game websites will share it. Oh, cool. Look at this update of whatever, you know? Um, but again, it's like, what do you want to do? What do you want to do with your art? It, maybe you love Pokemon and you want to do realistic Pokemon and then they make a Pokemon movie and you can work on it. You know, right. that is well, don't you, don't a you legitimate think, Don't you think that path. they would hire uh, art department guys anyways? And like the, the well, final well, artist, like there's only what happened on that Pokemon movie. That is what happened. Some guy did realistic Pokemon, and then they hired him to work oh, on the movie. Yeah, so, so like that, it, that happens. It's a too. legit like path, you know. Yeah. And um, but it, but again, it's like if that's what you want to do, mm-hmm. but maybe you're just like, oh, it'll be funny if I do this drawing, and then oh my god, everyone likes it. I guess I'll keep doing that. That that was another reason I didn't want to post anything from my book the whole time I was working on it because I knew that would happen. And even posting stuff now, it's like, oh, why do people like this more than that? Mm -hmm. And if I let that into my head when I was working on something, maybe I would have steered the whole project in a different direction based on (laughs) just likes on Instagram or something. You know, I don't want that to happen. I want it to be like, I want to 
I have something I want to create and I want to be creating in a vacuum without any other opinions or outside influence, even if it could potentially fail, it's still my own thing that I wanted to make. Mm. Um, it's really hard to do that now. You know, it's like, you basically have to look like you're dead for a couple of years <laughs> if you don't post anything. That's you know? true. I, but, you know, I think I might be false, exp uh, um, not expression, false um, um, perception mm. that that's happens. Because, like, you know, I look at I look at some of my friends like Aton and and Aaron Lemonic yeah. and like even Vitali, they only post like once in a few months, like realistically. Yeah. I, I mean, there are some artists that produce all the time and they build following doing that i think the perfect example is uh raf grassetti I, I you know the growth yeah he's doing growth, an amazing job the growth he had yeah. last year it's amazing yeah um yeah. i love his work uh, but you said as you said you know fan art will get you there like he's done so much fan art last year his yeah. channel just basically blew up you know i mean he's yeah. been building like even like the, the star fox year. thing recently is just like yeah just like like film film writers want to like make a movie out of it and you're like you fucking nailed you, like, you made it man you, know, you did it <laughs> like he yeah. he like cracked cracked the code like but again it's like he did it now it's going to be even harder for someone else to do it you know right. like you couldn't i don't think you could follow that exactly the way he did it because he kind of did it in a unique way mm -hmm. but if someone else is like i'm going to do star fox too like it wouldn't work because his is so good you know and you're going to have guys like that doing this so it's like you have to be as good or better than Raph, which is <laughs> it's, it's going to be tough, you know. Yeah, but we're um, talking about the art director of the God of God yeah, of War yeah. franchise, and um, that's like, I mean, he has so much body of work uh, from the industry. He, he's been working yeah. in the industry for so long that you know, it's it's a it's a completely different sort of like uh, problem to bite for him. Like doing fan art for him is way different uh, experience and goal. Than for an up and coming artist that want to like promote the work that they have. Sure, right? sure. Uh, I agree with you. Like doing fun art is definitely a way to get attention. I would say it's not the way that will get you. Although, like with with how the industry is changing, especially film, where pretty much like half, like oh no, more than half, like seventy five percent of movies right now are just remakes or or reboots or uh, sequels. Mm -hmm. You know. Who knows? Maybe that's well, what... But what's interesting, though, like, like say, like, uh, Spider-Verse, right? It was so different and unique. Mm -hmm. But to do that, they had to go to, um, like, Alberto, who was kind of like a fine art background, doing these, like, really interesting, unique visual paintings right. that had his own voice. You know, he spent years developing his own voice and has a really unique look to things he does. Same with, like, Neil Ross, like, right. this kind of graphic look to things. So... You know, that didn't develop in a vacuum on art station or something. You know, there was a unique yeah. individual who came up with an interesting voice that started working in production and then basically helped craft this really different look that is now in the movie. But now everyone's just going to do that. Yeah. But you need to be the guy like Alberto was and come up, work in isolation or whatever and, and develop... He definitely stands figure out, out who you are, what you like, sure. and develop a sense of sensibilities that are uniquely you. And it's it's not, it's not an easy thing to do. Yeah. Um, especially now when everyone's like connected and they all want to get the likes every five seconds. And it's uh, I'm not sure what it's going to be like growing up now. Like it's probably extra tough. Like we kind of like eased into it. We eased into like this technology drug. Yeah. And all the kids are just like thrown into the deep end now. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. how people's brains are gonna adapt. That's true. Like the <laughs> like we got a little little drop of the drug every every year, a little bit more, but kids now are just like drinking a gallon of it on day one or something. Yeah, but then they come up with things like TikTok, you know, and that's a completely yeah. different language uh, all of a sudden. It's true. Um, yeah, it's I'm um, you know it's as you said something interesting in the beginning where you said. Um, you feel like it's difficult to give an advice to a young, young and coming artists uh, because like the way you were com doing things back then, they are not necessarily <laughs> fully reflect of how, how hard or how different it is to get, you know, get the attention and get into the industry right now. Um, but yeah, for you, it was, it was different because like all the, 
I mean, not all you have to do, but yeah, obviously working on your craft is, is the one thing. That's that's sort of like a thing that you need to do regardless of how you're going to promote yourself. Um, but other than that, what was it for you? Like, I guess Facebook, a little bit of like posting. in, in Yeah, everything. Places, Just right? making sure to, to push work and being active and putting things out there all the time. But a lot of it too, like you were saying, it's, it is like supply and demand. At the time, <clears throat> all the projects I worked on kind of pushed a unique look to things um, because the director wanted something really different. And so I was part of those projects mm -hmm. and we had, we made something that very few people were doing. And so I was in a position where, okay, I have something that a lot of people want, but not a lot of people can do. Right. But that only lasts for so long, you know, that's only lasts you a couple of years. And after a while, everyone can do some photo bash robot, you know, and like some high school student does it for fun or whatever. Yeah. And they, um, young and, kids and do it even the better. demand is low, you know, <laughs> the supply, the supply and demand are, it's offset to a point where it's like, okay, I can't, I probably can't charge very much for that anymore because everyone could do it. Yeah. And that's, that's why it's important to like understand trends and understand the value you have relative to the market and is supply very high for this and the demand very low is the demand very high and the supply very low like like developing things that are in high demand but low supply and you can become an expert at that and make a lot of money in the market for a certain amount of time right but again nothing lasts forever yeah so it's it's being aware of all these trends and things and creating work to meet that demand and it's really hard now because you know it's so easy to learn things on the internet. Like, at, like when we started, there was like nothing, you know, like I had to go to art center, but now a lot of the things I learned, Scott put into some $20 books, you know, and you can learn a couple hundred grand of like industrial design for like 40 bucks, you know, if, if you are disciplined and dedicated. Um, so it's an interesting time where there's such an abundance of information that we had to pay a ton of money and go like move our whole life to these places to learn. And now you can just, it's just a click away or an Amazon purchase away. Um, so it really is up to you as an individual to have the discipline to learn the things you want to learn and right. push yourself and grow. Uh, Cause all the information's there now. It's, um, it's, it's definitely an interesting time. Yeah. How did you, how did you, so kind of rolling back to, to the middle of a conversation, once you felt like, okay, I have enough um, chatter, coming in you know mm -hmm. as you said you know call of duty treyarch uh reached out you had you had something going on how did you prepare for, like did you have a plan for travel <coughs> uh not really a lot of it was just i mean i had like my girlfriend now wife at the time was much more organized than me so she <laughs> was i probably couldn't have done it without her just because she was much better at planning but right so getting like it oh, wasn't we're going, probably, there. we're gonna do that yeah i probably would have stayed in places a lot longer mm -hmm. instead of traveling so much, but I'm glad we did just because um, after a week or so, you kind of get into a certain routine, which can be good and bad. Right. And I tried to time it where like, I think they needed send offs like every three or four days. And so I tried to work the beginning of the week, get a send off and then I'd have like two or three days while they were giving feedback to explore this new place. Um, and it was nice to like have a refresh when we moved to a new place. So like we go to a new place and it was like a whole new schedule, a whole new surrounding, a whole new. So it was like your mind was constantly in like absorption mode. So every like time kind of slows down when you're there's all this new stuff coming at you. So it was right. like a really like that one year or those three years felt like. But but again, after a week or so, your brain starts like turning that off and you're like that amazing architecture I was like fascinated with your brain just kind of get used to it turns it off yeah. you know it turns off the interest and it's it's just an interesting way to uh keep that part of your mind all open to learning and seeing what's around you and um but yeah a lot of it was just that like just based on where we we're going and her planning stuff and uh um sometimes around workshops like going to thu okay i have to be in portugal on mm -hmm. november or whatever so let's plan some cool locations on our way there um things like that or or for a job like going to france for valerian for on and off for a year um or just being around that area uh 
but then after that, it was, yeah, just figuring out a place to settle down for a bit. Like that cup, that life experience meter got full. Yeah. <laughs> the cup was full. It's like, I need to digest enough. all this, you know? Um, and it, yeah, it's like if I traveled anymore, I just felt like <coughs> I'm just wasting time. Like I, I like my brain is full. I can't right. put more in and I just need to like be somewhere and just squeeze it all out into a project or my work. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was another thing I want to bring up was like, uh, deciding what you want to do and being also being in a place like New Zealand was like kind of boring in a good way where there's just nothing to do a lot of the time. Everyone was kind of go home. So I like, I guess I'll work uh, till two the, in the morning the locations every night that you see for four years. Right, yeah. <laughs> but, but, but again, I, I wanted to try to capture that. Like if I went to LA, I feel like, there's too many distractions and there's always something happening. And I felt like it would have been too hard to focus. So like Seattle was a happy medium of like, like it's, it's still stuff to do, but it's also kind of cut off and people are a little more introspective because of all the rain. And <laughs> I feel like it's easier to get things done. I, like I could get it done in three years up here and maybe it would take me six in LA or, or something like it would take me point. longer with all the distractions. Yeah. So I'm intentionally living somewhere a little more cut off and boring where um, it's easier to focus, yeah. uh, for, for a project I want to finish. It's the weather, man, like it's always sunny almost all the time. So it's not like, oh, it's yeah, raining. I'm not, I'm not going out. Like you yeah, rarely ever helps. have that, you know, <laughs> and like the industry is here. So all your friends are here. That too. Yeah. There's always something to do. And it's... Yeah, every day there's always something like, oh, you gotta come to this party or you gotta meet this director. And it's just like, ah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. It's hard to, again, it's hard to say no. Um, I see what you mean when by it's just always boring. it's always around you. You know, I see what you mean by um, saying boring in New Zealand too. I mean, like if you think about like boring in New Zealand, like all the Lord of the Rings locations, you know. But it's a different different experience once you travel and focus on that. Like you have a focus to see those places for the first time yeah, or revisit yeah. them after a while and soak that all in. Versus like being there and knowing that's that's available to you or seeing it all the time. Like you kind of get used to it or you have that mindset like oh, i can take a break anytime to explore it but i don't need to do it at the time you know i i guess it's just more of like it was it's a very it's like island life i don't people probably don't understand what that is unless they go somewhere like if you go to hawaii or something mm-hmm. like I, island life is like it's a very slow kind of laid back pace of life and everyone's kind of stuck on this little place um and i don't know it's just like a certain tone and pace to everything like the most exciting thing I think in the news when I was there was like a penguin got lost and they helped <laughs> it get back. You know, it's like that was like the big news. Everything's so cut off and it's just kind of like quiet, Yeah, which much in, in a good way, though, in a good way. Um, there's not like crazy politic news like in America every five seconds. It was just really nice and cut off and it was easy to focus and just like, you know, again, it's just like, I guess I'll go home and work till two in the morning. Right every day for four years <laughs> yeah so now you're settled um yeah you're working in the studio or are you working from home uh working i'm about to work from home for six months i think there's the contract system is like i go off site for a bit um so i'm about to start that but i've been in-house for like 18 months uh, almost a year and a, i guess a year and a half um and then gonna be off site for a bit and then that must have been a change right <laughs> like from seeing places every week like or every other week to sitting in one spot being in the studio. That's such yeah, a but again, change. it's like it's like what do you like the ebb and flow of our lives? Like what we need, what we don't need. Like right. I feel like that was full, and because the art side of me took kind of the back burner, mm-hmm. and my focus was on experiencing life, and I was still doing good work, but it was like I was relying on things I already knew I could do very well. Right. And there wasn't a lot of time to learn new stuff. And I was very limited by my tools. I just had like a, you know, like a laptop. So I couldn't do some crazy 3D stuff. Mm -hmm. Or if I did, it would take like 20 hours to render like one image or something. Um, So I was definitely, there's a lot of things like all this Octane and Blender stuff and all these other things that were happening. I I was really falling behind um, just because of my tools and, and the life I was living. So for me, I was really ready to like 
level up the art stuff. Right. So being in house was great. I was surrounded by, I missed being around artists. I was surrounded by good artists. I could learn every day, pick up all these new tools. And so for me, it was just like, like I was ready to go to the gym, you know, I was ready to get back in the gym and, and yeah. get going. Um, because I had been doing this other thing for so long and now I wanted to go back to that. Um, that makes but again, sense. you can't do everything. You can't do the same thing forever and everything changes and just understanding where you are in your life and what you need, what you don't need and making sure to be in the right situation and environment that will nurture the things you need. Um, it's, it's easy. It's well, that's hard. It's, it's easy to stay, to not change. You yeah. know, we, we like safety and stuff, but it's like this job is not, helping me grow in the ways I need to be growing. And it's hard to just say, I want to quit and go somewhere else that maybe it will. Um, but I've always, I always try to be kind of aware of where I am in, as an artist, what I need as an artist and in order to push my work where I want to go, like being aware of what I want to be as an artist yeah. and trying to make a surrounding or be in a surrounding or have the jobs that will help nurture that whether it's at a studio or in personal work, um, yeah, just finding finding a happy balance. It's also as in, much as incredibly um, uh, dangerous in in a way because how the industry is changing all the time, right? Like being being sort of like um, compliant with your current situation and thinking like that's going to last forever. That's such a dangerous uh, preposition to to go about. Um, because everything is constantly changing, the this hardware yeah. is moving on, it's getting better pretty much every year. You know, I was actually watching a video, uh, um, like a benchmark video, and I've read this mm -hmm. this crazy news um, where they were comparing like the speed of current iPhones to MacBook Pro, mm -hmm. and in some in some situations, I think it was like uh, iMovie rendering, uh, like rendering the the you know. Sure. It's exactly same file, right? Same same files, 4K rendering. iPhone was smoking last year's uh, MacBook Pro. <laughs> what the hell is going on? And then like you look at the news where Fortnite plays on 120 FPS 4K on the new iPads, whereas consoles are like barely even scratching the surface. You know, it's crazy. And man. That's just last like, year. Yeah. Um, so you think about the hardware, how, how, how much is changing and then the software development, like Blender had a, had a launch last year. It's becoming, it's, it's one of those, one of those software where, where it was a laughing stock and now it's yeah. becoming to be something that industry is using. Yeah. Uh, a lot of it's funny. Are using, I, uh, you know, we keep joking. It's like. It's like I'm still not learning it. <laughs> two, it's like two professional. It's like two professional artists that were like laughing at the bad student or something, and then they, but then they rested on their laurels and didn't try for a lot of years. And that little artist was like, "I'm gonna keep going," and it kept getting better. Yeah. And then it finally oh, no. got better, and yeah. they're like, "Oh no!" <laughs> <laughs> it's like the little artist. It's like That's exactly the person who kept trying and and kept going. And these are like, these other programs or something were just like, ah, ha, ha. but then they stopped trying and stopped improving. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Um, but again, that's that's the way to get better. Just one step at a time. Keep going, and you'll you'll turn uh, coal into a diamond. You know. Yeah. Uh, I I wanted to ask you that question, but I realized, um, you know, you, you based on you know the story of you know you traveling and now hunkering down and kind of learning a little bit more. Um, I almost I almost had this feeling last year, uh, last year and this year actually this kind of like. Uh, mo moment of like thinking about where the industry is going and and, yeah. and, and, and feeling that you know I, it almost sometimes feels that with all, all the hardware and software um, development and the things you have to learn it almost becoming like a treadmill in a way right yeah uh, do you it, feel it that? always is do yeah. you feel that it's, yourself? it's a never like like I feel like production art is always like a never ending treadmill or like an arms race. Right. It's like, Oh, now we got the nuke. Now everyone <laughs> needs to use a nuke or something bigger. And now we have these crazy missiles. So everyone needs to like build their arm. Like it's like a never ending, like it's like Dragon Ball, escalation. It's like Dragon Ball where it starts with hitting yeah. tournaments yeah. To, to like a few seasons later, they're like destroying planets. 
<laughs> yeah, it's it's funny because at Weta, I remember there's a similar uh, situation, but like way older, where it was like everyone was just drawing in pencils, right. like on Lord of the Rings, right? Yeah. And then one day, one artist did colored pencils, and the director goes right to the colored pencil and ignores all the, the black and white drawings. <laughs> And then the next day, someone uses marker, and then he goes to the marker, and he ignores the colored pencil. And then Photoshop, you know, it, it just kept going. And then it's like someone was sculpting, and then he get, went to the sculpture over the drawings, and then ZBrush, <laughs> and, and it just like yeah, a never-ending escalation of and then Mullins technology. Comes in, Craig Mullins comes in with "fuck you" to everyone, and and doing <laughs> digital art on the mouse. But again, it's like it's like there's a couple paths to take. It's like, you can always be on the cutting edge of technology and there's a lot of people who will want that, but then you can always spend that time and develop a unique voice that they can only get from you. And I feel like right. that's also valuable. Yeah. So it's like, there's a lot of different ways to create value in yourself, hopefully a little bit of both, but it's like creating a unique voice with technology. Like I feel like Vitaly did that when he did those like 20 days of robots, yeah. he had a unique oh, voice mixed with like high end technology and put it out there and creating value on both fronts, which I think is is very smart, but it's very hard to do. So it's like, it's just like a being, again, paying attention to what's out there and what's happening and trying to stay on top of things. And uh, it, it's tough though. I mean, I guess for like students coming into the industry, especially like going to workshops and things and some of the portfolios that they wanted to me, me to review, I'm just like, like this, <laughs> this maybe would get you a job 10 years ago. Like things happen so fast. Yeah. Like I, we couldn't like, like it was hard to tell people like I couldn't use any of this or the studio I work at couldn't use any of this. Like maybe like try this and do this. And you know, this would maybe be step one, but you got to go, you got to do step one to step 10 and you're only offering step one, which is a very small part of the job. Um, and it's just being aware of what studios need and, the level of fidelity they needed at uh even with things like kitbash 3d like i feel bad for a lot of students because a lot of schools are like they come out with a whole portfolio of just like japanese architecture and it's like well i can buy a kitbash 3d yeah. japanese architecture pack and make your portfolio in two hours or something you know i can just go in blender and make your portfolio in like an hour of renders and you spent like two years and probably are hugely in debt and yeah, and you have a turbo. Squid. It's tough, man. It's tough. You have like all those. It's really tough. All those places where you can buy assets, basically, and there's so much stuff being sold already. Where it's like, I don't need to. I mean, I could technically, I could learn how to how to uh, model. I'm sure it will help, but but then again, I can also com learn how to compose scenes yeah. with existing models. And then if I know enough about, enough about painting, I can set up scenes real quick yeah. and live with that. You know. But then again, a lot of it feels like being it's like we're becoming more like assemblers, right, to make the cool image, which I'm kind of fine with. But I'm I guess I'm, I think I'm fine with it because we went through the whole again, we like got a little drip of it at a time. We we started at the beginning, we we're just drawing and now we're yeah, I'm okay with assembling right. stuff because I just want to make the cool image. But if I was just starting, I would feel like I'm not. Same thing when photo bash started, and I felt like I wasn't a real artist. Like maybe I won't feel like I'm a real artist if I'm <laughs> just starting and I'm just combining. I don't know. It's like I don't know like, if that would. Be it's like thing. coming back from 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 spending a whole day in the like a really dusty, smoky city, and you come home and you feel dirty. Like oh, I have that layer of <laughs> shit on me, you know. <laughs> but I don't know. Like it is for me. It's fun because I just feel like I'm playing with toys all day now and like right. making the coolest thing I can. Um, I don't know. It's fun for me. It's fun, but I don't know if it's fun because I've been through all the other steps, kind of thing. Yeah. And now we're like, now we're like just painting the house, but we've been through all the steps to build the house. Yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> I I, f I think, but I think the part of of that where if it's easy and everyone can do it, then that's not gonna get you anywhere, right? Because you're gonna have that's a true too. Yeah, that's true too. Like it's fun, <clears throat> and it is easy, so everyone can do it. So, like, if all you have in your portfolio is that maybe, you know, you, again, you don't stand out as much. You don't have a unique voice because the thing you're doing, anyone can do. Um, but back to, back to like, like portfolio stuff, like, I think it's art school is completely irrelevant now. Like, yeah. I would never pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to go to art school. Do not waste your money. Do not go in debt. You're never going to make it back. Like, like what you offer with your, your online 
classes and things like schoolism, uh, your your learn squared, um, learn squared things like this, or or, <laughs> or smaller or smaller like in person things like brainstorm or concept design academy. Like that is all you need to if like if you can't teach yourself online or, or disciplined enough, these in class experiences are like you know a couple hundred bucks. You're not in debt to a bank for the rest of your life. Like I feel like that is all the money you need to spend on, on this sort of stuff now. Right. Like do not go in debt because things happen and change so fast. Like by the time you finish the thing you worked on is completely irrelevant. Cause all the teachers at these bigger institutions like haven't worked in 10 years and you're just getting out of date information. Yeah. Um, I agree with that hundred percent. I, I used to think even a couple of years ago where, um, you know, like maybe going to art center, and obviously art center changed uh even from the time you were learning that was a completely mm -hmm. different environment than now <clears throat> sure and, um i was thinking back then like you know if you go to those places um at least you, you might learn the discipline like just like getting discipline enough to actually know how much effort it takes to learn to get there but now i'm thinking like if you need if you need to learn that in such an if you need to learn that alone in such a competitive environment where, where mm -hmm. you're going to have hundreds of people or thousands of people that have that discipline themselves from the get go. And then you're putting yourself in debt. And then also the yeah. egos come in where you're like, I've done enough. You know, you, you, you think you're going to try to convince yourself that you're better than you really are. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, I feel like, as you said, it's a recipe for a disaster. Where it's like I think the only like asterisk to that statement is like unless you need a visa to stay in the country or something. Right, yeah. But <laughs> then uh, honest then maybe, but still two hundred grand to like stay in the country just to I don't know, man. I don't know if that's I've, worth it. I've I came to this country, I uh, you know, I've came to US and I have actually, you know, for for, for listeners to uh, of Art Cafe, there is an episode I've i I've done um, I was actually a couple of years ago already with Alex Neonakis and I can't remember his name. There was a lawyer, actual immigration lawyer on a podcast with us. And we discussed like, hmm. what, you, what are the steps for a foreign artist to like, you have to take in order to become, uh, you know, uh, eligible to work in the U S if you, if you really want to do that, I don't think it's necessary anymore with how global the work became. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. But even if you if that's your goal, like I want to live in the you know I want to live in L.A. or Seattle or you know New York, whatever. I want to work in this industry and be here. Um, even even that you don't you don't need to have a school. Like obviously having a, a high education helps uh, with the immigration. But mm -hmm. if you if you're gonna be hired in such a competitive mm -hmm. market in U.S., your work is good enough already for the government to justify it to get you like an O one visa. Uh, which is like a you know extraordinary artist or whatever sure. kind of kind of kind of deal, right? Which is, by the way, if you want to like stay and become a citizen or whatever, or get a green card, that's the way to go. Like you want to get a mm. one because it's it's much easier to get a green card from from that visa than H one B. I know it for a fact. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so like even even with that, I don't know. Like, and again, you said two hundred k. That's yeah, so like art, I'm sure it's more now. Oh, I'm honestly, I'm sure, sure Art Center is probably a lot more than that now. But at the time, it was probably around that for now. Now stop four stop years or whatever. For a second, and think what you can do with 200k. You can buy it yeah. the top of the line. You can buy the fifty-four thousand dollar Mac Pro with all the bells and whistles maxed out. Yeah. You never want to do that, anyways. And like, <laughs> uh, and maybe like eight years of rent. <laughs> eight years of rent, car, all the tutorials in the world. <laughs> Yeah. Like all and and private sessions with like the with every top artist, top artists, and yeah, and I remember I remember back in school someone said like, or one of the teachers was like, "You guys are crazy. You should just take this money and put it into real estate." And that's when housing in LA was like nothing. Like if you put that 200k into a house in LA like 10 years ago, right? You'd have like 10 million dollars yeah. right now. That's way more. That's like more money than. You would have made in your entire <laughs> career for the your whole life or something yeah. just because you put that money into real estate or something like you're just kind of like oh my god what did i do yeah <laughs> i mean i don't know i kind of i kind of i mean how many classes we have on learn square like about 30 now somewhere around along the lines 
like even if you bought them without sales or whatever like all at, all at once that's just gonna be a, a friction yeah and you have a library of the best artists in the world teaching you yeah. how they work in the industry that you're trying to get in and giving you an actual industry tips you know i'm talking about learn squared obviously because i'm like part owner uh together with my with my uh partner uh, andrew uh, but there are schools like Brainstorm where you can take the, yeah. the, the courses and if you're in LA, you can you can have education from the best in the industry as well. Yeah. There is Schoolism from Bobby Chu. There is uh, there are Nomon DVDs, obviously. I think Nomon also yeah. have their have its uh, own school, which I'm pretty sure is cheaper than um, than Art Center or any other schools out there. Um, I might be wrong about that. Don't don't quote me. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's there's op, like because in class, options. being in a class <coughs> can be very helpful. Sure. Uh, because it's easy to just be like, yeah, I want to do that, and you take an online class, and then you're just like, ah, I didn't do it. Yeah. You know, but but showing up each week and seeing, oh, I'm, I'm disappointing the teacher, or I'm competing with, what's what's that student going to do? I want to make sure I'm doing that. You don't have to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to get that experience. You can spend like two hundred or four hundred or whatever, right. and also be taught by people who are top of the industry um it's yeah i think it's just being very smart because there's so many things out there especially uh it's hard to know what's what's what and what's good what's bad uh and and there's stuff like that i feel like have started popping up in most countries so wherever you are there's probably something like that nearby like uh um like Derek and michael kuz have their school in poland now so there, there's a lot of options like in all these different countries now of similar kind of things where it's not a ton of money you can learn from people who are experienced in your country um and yeah i mean yeah so much information out there it's so different now like it's so much easier but again because it's so easy it's uh, the the barrier of entry is very very low which means a lot yeah. of people pick it up and the competition is going to be yeah. higher i feel like just not having assumptions that that's what i like I'm good enough or, uh, you know, I'm done. Um, obviously, you know, there's things like healthy balance of work and life and, you know, having sure. sleep, all those things. Yeah, they, they do matter. But the, the worst thing you can do is like assume like, oh, I'm, I'm good enough. That's that might be true for now, for next few months, maybe a year or two. Yeah, you know? it never <laughs> ends. It never it really never ends. Like after the Weta experience, I felt like, again, I had a unique set of skills that weren't there's a high demand for a skill that was in very low supply, yeah. but that fills up so fast, you know, like a, maybe I have a year or two before the rest of the industry can do that or, or catches on, you know, you can be ahead for a little while, but then after a while that special skill becomes irrelevant. You fall off um, quickly and, and you gotta, you gotta find something new. You gotta find the next thing or you gotta um, make sure you're ahead of the curve or at least, hopefully near the top of the curve. Right. Um, that's always changing. It's always changing. What's your goal for uh, for 2020? Obviously, I, I'm, I'm guessing uh, finishing Huxley, right? Basically finishing the book and also planning some really some really cool... Uh, basically, I'm working with some friends to take it into more of a film mm -hmm. territory that will do something for the launch, which I'm excited for. It's just going to be kind of hell year like a, <laughs> a very hard year <laughs> yeah it'll probably be one of the hardest years for me but in a good way like getting something it's like the uh um i don't know what it's like to give birth but i imagine it's just as artists we like there's all this build up to make something and then get it out there it's always the hardest part of like letting go and getting it out there and 2020 is going to be my giving birthing this thing to the world um, and trying to do my best to break breaking the uh, mental support bonds. it and, and let it grow. Yeah. Like I remember at Lightbox, David Levy was recommending to me the he's like, when you finish the thing, that's just when it starts. He said he was he regrets not supporting his plug project more. Mm -hmm. And he just gave me a lot of advice, like make sure like when you, when you finish it, that's like the baby being born. And you need to help raise it. If you just right. don't do anything, it's going to die. Yeah. The baby will die. You, know? um, you have to nurture it every day, every week, every month, if you want it to succeed and grow up. Um, and so it's, 
uh, it's been it was a really good device to just think about. And so a lot of planning to just uh, make sure there's a big do my best to get it out there and hopefully it does well. Yeah, if, especially yeah. if you want to do something more with it, like just releasing it, it's not it's not going to be good enough, you know, like you think you yeah. have to yeah. think about marketing it. Uh, finding different uh, finding different avenues, presenting it to like places that normally you would not be able yeah. to see it. Um, if that's the goal, like I want this to become something bigger, then obviously, yeah, I, yeah. I, I would agree with that. Like, it's just but it's like the same thing with it's like the same point we were talking about with students trying to get into the industry. Right. It's like the same thing all over again, where it's like, oh, I want to make something. Well, it's like, well, everyone's making something. What? Why should people care about my thing over? the millions of other things yeah. in comics that are getting released every day. Like just because we make something doesn't mean it's going to be good. You really have to go above and beyond to, to, to stand out from the noise uh, and cut through, cut through the crowd because, you know, Marvel and all these things are such a huge driving force and drown out every, like Star Wars and Marvel and all this stuff drowns yeah. out any new thing. So it's, and Disney really Disney trying buying to buy everything, make, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but it's Basically. tough. But but again, it is an opportunity because Amazon, Netflix, and Apple, especially who's just starting, they really need yeah. their big franchise. Disney has owns like everything right now, so it is a good time to create our own stuff and get it out True. there because the streaming wars are just getting started, and they all need their own Mad Max, they all need their own Star Wars, they all need their own Mandalorian or whatever. And they'll be very <laughs> aggressive about snatching up anything that's pretty cool. Yeah, uh, you can tell. You can tell those platforms are trying. Like even HBO. I mean HBO to a certain degree, but like Amazon, uh, you know, they they are trying to push their own projects or buy projects from from other people yeah. and make them something. You know, uh, what was that superhero show that was released last year? I can't remember. Oh, uh, the boys. The boys. That's a <laughs> that good example. That was great. Right? I, lo I love that. Yeah. I didn't like the way it looks in, in terms of like cinematography. I, I, I felt sure. like that was a missed opportunity, but I did like the show. It was it was yeah. refreshing. And I know it's based really on the graphic novel. Really interesting story. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Simon Stallenhog as well. His stuff's coming out pretty soon, oh, I cool. think. That's um, awesome. So he made his, he made his books. Yeah. Uh, I think everyone sees I think his work Am already. If not, just yeah, go Yeah, I think Amazon now. bought one. I think HBO bought one. Someone else bought the third one. Um, and yeah, that's like... It's been it's been awesome to see how he did that, just to kind of like learn. And um, I think that he just started posting some promo shots of like, I think it's based off maybe his first book, mm -hmm. but they're making like a TV series, uh, multi episode for Amazon. And I'm just like, like bravo, yeah, <laughs> bravo, man. <laughs> but but again, like he is one of those guys who like really stand out. You know, like his yeah. work when 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 he started posting it online, um, everyone took notice literally yeah. everyone again it's like spending that time to develop a unique yeah look or a unique voice like like if you saw one of those paintings for like production art like oh it's not as detailed as this you know movie concept but it's like he wants it to look this way yeah. and he just keeps going down this rabbit hole of what he wants and after a while there's a huge body of work of this unique thing it's like oh what's that what you know i want to know more about this what is this yeah um yeah that's true amazon netflix you can you can tell netflix is trying real hard with like love death and robots and all the ips that they're releasing yeah, all the yeah. films there's a lot of hit and miss obviously that when that happens sure but that's that's pretty standard um and apple yeah apple apple's like just getting started just man getting so started. like yeah they are they and they have they have money <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> um Amazon as well, right? Amazon's like, like the 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 biggest. No, I, wasn't Apple the biggest company, or Amazon? I don't know. I think uh, Apple was like, the the what, the first. No, maybe not. Um, they did reach one billion, right? No, it's trillion. It's trillion. No, no, it's last not year trillion. was like no way. It's trillion. Yeah, trillion dollar company. It was like Apple, Amazon, oh, yeah, and someone else. Right. They all they all surpassed it for a second or something. I don't know if anyone stayed above it, but it was like a oh it's we're trillion, trillion dollar company. Holy crap. It's crazy. It's ridiculous. That's so crazy. That's so crazy. And like, if you and you look at the capital, they do have money to spend to develop things. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, just snatch I up. Agree with you. Snatch up something that could be the next whatever. Yeah. Um, if that's something you want to do, obviously, like not everyone wants to wants to go through that through that. You know, sure. Night, let's call it a nightmare because it's not 
easy to develop something, go through like all the hardship of, of making yeah. it happen. Go broke a couple times, yeah. live in your parents' basement for six months. <laughs> and then and then once you're done, that's where it all starts, where you have to go on those meetings, pitch meetings. Like it's just yeah. like, you know, I have a couple of friends that do that and it's just like it's a nightmare. It's just like Yeah. Yeah. It's like it never it never ends, yeah. you know? Like even if we start that like I'm gonna make this and I'm gonna do that, and then it's like you're at level one of a hundred on this new thing. Oh, I got to get better at pitching. And now I want to improve that skill. Yeah. Um, and again, there's no guarantee that anything would yeah. happen from it again, which is why it's a roll of a dice. Most people are fine just staying in a steady job because it's like, there's so much uncertainty and stress. And uh, I, I can see, you know, why people want to do certain things depending on yeah. what they want. It's, it's short of a miracle to get, uh film to be actually made from the moment it like you get optioned you know because yeah. that's what's what happens like usually you pitch something and they option the idea and they try to develop it get a writer maybe you know all that kind of yeah. stuff but that's just like only one percent of those projects actually lift off and and uh it's crazy though even like with marvel like I'm sure it was the same thing. They, when they made Iron Man, they're like, is this even going to work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, in hindsight, we're like, of course, it's Iron Man. But at the time, they were probably like, is this even going to work? Like, let's try and make something cool. And after that, it's just like, Phew. yeah. Okay, we got this, this This story worked. We got like five million other stories. Let's start making them. Yeah, they, um, they've managed to find, you know, I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of Marvel movies, even though I'm I'm working on Marvel movies, and <laughs> and the reason I'm saying this is because uh, I have a certain like trash le level of uh, appreciation to um, cinematography, like great directing, like all of those things. Where there's only very few special projects that I really find dear and 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 awesome, like and amazing to me. Um, and everything else becomes more of an entertainment than cinema. It's almost like what mm -hmm. Ma uh, Martin Scorsese said, right? Yeah. In terms yeah. of like comparing entertainment versus like pure cinema, it's it's. I guess it's more of like an artistic look at it. Um, you know. Very yeah, subjective. but but again, it's like I don't. It's I don't think that's a bad thing. Like right. again, it's like 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 consuming food or something. Like I don't always want to eat some fancy yeah, French correct, dessert, correct. you know, like yeah. sometimes I want a steak or sometimes I want this. Like, uh, I think it's, for me, it's fine. Like sometimes I just want to yeah. go have fun and enjoy myself and don't really want to worry about. And then other times I really want an intense, like yeah. movie like Parasite where you're like, Oh my God, like that was incredible. But whether you um, like Marvel that, movies or not, like you have to appreciate the fact that, uh, the head of the studio, um, Kevin Feig, um, as, as, as well as other people involved in making the whole process happen, right? They found a formula where they hired the, the right writers, the right directors, and yeah. the right cast for their movies, and then follow that formula. It's almost like most of the Marvel movies follow a certain production formula, and it just works, you know? You compare it to DC, it's a hit or miss. Sure. Like Joker. I feel Joker like, but it's amazing, interesting, right? Joker is yeah, like one of the best great. movies yeah. released. But then you watch like the Superman. <laughs> you know, it's like it's interesting though. Like with with Marvel, it's like they're very aware of what they're creating. Yeah. And make sure to stay again, like we were talking about before, making sure to stay ahead of the curve. So you're not giving that people the same food every time. It's like or the same flavor. It's like. Every time I feel like I'm done with superhero movies, mm -hmm. the next movie they make, they're like, oh, that was amazing. Like, like they, they change it up and you're like, oh, wow, that was really cool. And each time I feel, they're very aware of what they are providing right. and making sure to keep it interesting and not just do the same movie over and over again or the same exact thing. Like it's Yeah, it uh, has its own vibe. Like you look at the Guardians of the Galaxy. It's a completely different yeah, exactly, vibe exactly. than Captain America or Iron Man, you know? Um, like before like i remember when the guardians of the galaxy trailer came out and i was like what the hell is this and i thought i was gonna hate it like i went <laughs> to the movie theater thought i was gonna hate it i thought this was gonna be terrible 
And it was like my favorite, like my favorite movie they ever made. I was like, holy shit, like this is so fun. Yeah, and they're finding like, the really directors just... too that are like really, really interesting, you know. Um, but yeah, hundred um, percent. It's 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 different. I have a do I do have another question to you, and I know there's a bunch of questions that were asked by oh yeah by people, but I have this question because we we're talking about you know develop what, what we're gonna do in 2020. And developing your own ideas, all that stuff. Uh, I wonder if you ever run into an issue, or issue, if you run into this uh, train of thought where you ask yourself, like, you know, I could do this, uh, I could do my books, I could do work, I could develop new projects, maybe I'll start a company, like all of those things. Your brain comes up with those ideas, and maybe some of them you have ongoing, and then you ask yourself, like, what do I want to focus on? Because everything is interesting. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And you always, it's almost like a roll of a dice. Which of those uh, I can bank on and, and, you know, make it so that it becomes a, becomes a thing that I'm proud of and is, is successful. I, I know reaching for success is not a right metrics, right? So you, nev you should never look at that. But there's always that uncer uncertainty, as you said, sure. right? Especially when you're providing. Like, I wonder how, like, if you ever run into something like that. Absolutely. Yeah. Like that's probably, I keep saying that's the hardest thing to a lot of things, but that is one of the harder things where it's like having the discipline mm -hmm. to say, what is the absolute most important thing or the absolute, absolute most coolest thing I could be doing with my time right. at any moment. And this, my Huxley thing is like the thing I've decided this is what I want to focus all my energy on because if I take that cool movie or if I try doing this and I split my time up, yeah, you spread yourself maybe down. everything will get done, but it will take me like 10 times longer because my time is split up too much. Yeah. Um, so yeah, for sure. Like I choose the one thing that is like the coolest, most absolute badass thing I want to work on. And then I try to like put everything else on pause like right now, if, if Huxley fails, I basically have a document of just like 50 other cool stories I want to make that right. I was like, oh, I want to do this. But I have to have the discipline of just like, I'll save that one for Later. after this is done. Yeah. Um, so it's just, again, it's just disciplining ourselves and, and making sure this is picking the coolest, most important thing we can do with our time and trying to shut out anything else that will slow that down. Yeah. I mean, it still happens. So like little things pop up where it's like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll do this little thing, but it's only like a couple weeks. Um, but anything outside of that where it's like, hey, you want to work on this movie? It won't take up too much of your time, too much of your time, but it always ends up taking up too much of our time. Yeah. Um, or I guess I've always, I guess over the years I've learned there's no, there's no quick or easy money. And all the times I've tried to sidetrack some cool thing I wanted to make, to do some little thing like, oh, I'll just do this little tutorial and it'll make a bunch of money and then I can focus, finally focus on my thing. It never ends up working. It takes up way too much time. It yeah. never makes the amount of money I thought it would. And I would have been better off making the thing that I wanted to in the first place. And I probably would have been done with a couple projects by now had I learned that earlier and just focus all my time on the coolest thing. Like I kind of don't give a fuck about money anymore. I just want to like make cool shit and put it out there <laughs> is all I care about. Like, I don't care if I go broke again, right. like to make that, like, I, I just want to make cool stuff and put it out there now. Like, that's all I really want to do. Um, so 2020 moving forward is just like, make the coolest thing I possibly can. Yeah. Put it out there. I don't give a fuck about buying a fancy car or something. Like, I, I just want to put all my time and energy into making the coolest new stuff and putting it out there. Cause I, like, Anytime we go on the internet or Twitter, especially, it's just like people complaining about how bad movies are, or how it's all the same stuff over and over again. And if you're just a general consumer, I can understand the need to complain and stuff. But if we are artists who work in this industry, we are in a unique position to change that. Yeah. So instead of complaining, I would rather be creating the thing I want to see. And everyone has the skill sets or hopefully is working on the mm. skill sets to be able to do that. So I feel like as artists, it's our responsibility to... Instead of complaining about stuff, why don't we try making that thing? Like, what is that thing that you want to see? It, like, you have an opinion about all the things you don't like. Well, what do you like? 
yeah make that thing like what is the imagine like the coolest movie that you want to see and make that you know spend spend the time making that working on that and put it out there and um i think it's just a more constructive way to create cool stuff yeah put it out in the world it takes a certain amount of structure that you have to put in your life uh in order to succeed in anything uh and as you said nothing comes overnight i think that's yeah. that's what um that what might 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 be a dismay for a lot of up and coming artists if they don't know better is that and i would say quite a quite a large number of people in general um uh, look on a lot of things um uh, mostly because of lack of experience of knowing uh, why if things work out in a certain way they just look at oh like this guy is successful he's doing this that means that if i do that i'll be successful and i can do it overnight that's usually not how it works you know most of the if you look at the youtube sphere or even twitch um or like really successful artists um it almost looked like they they made their success overnight like yeah, it had just yeah. happened but then like when you when you just spend enough time that that extra that extra google search let's put it this way just to learn about what actually you know what's the history of them almost almost to a teeth all of them outside of like i guess pop culture it's like the iceberg right it's like the iceberg analogy exactly you, know? you just you don't see all that hard work there are some outliers underneath. in pop culture that just like overnight sure. they just made like a meme or something and then they just became a celebrity because of that but that's like we're not talking about that you look at someone who's like made a success i don't know like a, a good example is like this guy ninja right on twitch uh, he yeah, he actually, yeah i think he moved from twitch he became like a superstar almost yeah right? like the most watched person uh, in the streaming environment but <clears throat> you, you might think like it happened overnight like oh she's just this kid just became this thing but apparently he was like a like a you know um esports competitor for like a yeah. decade or something you know like really really like working really hard to get to get to a certain level and then streaming that um and having zero success whatsoever for years and years and years yeah until he ramp up enough experience and consistency where people started to take notice and usually what happens is that that growth is like a curve right it starts yeah. with like very low it goes forever <laughs> and eventually you reach that threshold where you've built enough consistency you've learned enough about the business and and everything and like what you have to do to make it better yeah. and better and you have the love for it to not give up to actually pass that threshold it rarely happens it's very when yeah it happens it's, it's good. a very consistent thing it's like it really comes again it comes down to like picking the thing you love to do yeah. and just doing it and just sticking with it and doing it and like i feel like that's very much a thing that in my life is like all the times I've deviated, like, Oh, I'm going to follow this trend because it's popular. Now I always regret it. And it's would have been better if I just stuck down the path that I really wanted to do. Um, because you're just diverting attention on a, a kind of a passing thing. Um, same thing with like, uh, what is it like this, um, entrepreneur guy, Gary V talked about like, you know, what if in high school you liked Pokemon and your parents told you to like get a real job, but instead you focused on Pokemon, you made blogs, you made YouTube channels, and then Pokemon Go and all the stuff explodes and you are in the perfect position to yeah. monetize that or become the guy for that thing. But it's just something you love to do. Um, same thing with like, I remember David Levy, back to David again, but like, I remember he mentioned something like that, like, some students would come up to him when he was working on like Prometheus or Avatar, like they've only been working like six months and they're like, Oh, I don't think my career's going anywhere. <laughs> like this isn't working. And he's like, man, I spent like 15 years working on a bunch of video games that never came out. And yeah. then I finally got to work on Assassin's Creed. And then I worked my way into film, like after like 15 or 20 years, you know, he's and, an OG. And this yeah. kid, this kid is a lot of the students are just like after, you know, like six months or something like, Oh, how do I get to work on movies? This isn't my life's not going. <laughs> you know, it's like it, it takes a long time, uh, and it's going to be way harder now. But like, yeah, it. I think that's also one of the things. Just you, you just understanding time and just how long it takes to do things. Like, 
when I first started at Weta on a movie, at first, the first like week or month, you're like, oh my God, I'm working on a movie. I'm working at Weta. And then after a while, it's like, uh, yeah, I'm still working on a movie. <laughs> I'm still working on a movie every yeah. day. That initial and in three years, the movie will be done. That initial experience of like, oh my God, I just grabbed yeah. God uh, by his feet, you know? Um, but again, it's like a pace. Yeah. It's like a. It's like a pace you learn to develop. It's like this is just every day. You just got to keep doing yep. it. And eventually you'll get to the place you want to be or the skill level you need to be at or the amount of work that you've worked on that you're ready for this opportunity. Um, just that that timing and pace and just learning that things take time. Yeah. Um, like I had a panic attack freak out in the middle of my graphic novel when I was like halfway through. I was like, oh, my God, this is taking too long. And <laughs> Um, maybe I should just release half of it and try to, and then when I finish the rest, I'll, I'll publish the other half. And yeah. I talked to a few graphic novel friends who've been doing stuff like, uh, Kazu Kobayashi. He's, he's on like his ninth book. He, of the popular amulet books. And he was like, this is totally normal. Just keep going. Yeah, just keep going. Most people, most people don't even get halfway and it kind of helped calm that anxiety down and you're like, okay. And yeah. You kind of mentally calculate, okay, based on how this is going, it's probably going to take me another year and a half. And instead of freaking out about like, oh my God, a year and a half, it's just like, okay, okay, year and a half, That's I can do that. Takes. Just keep keep going. Yeah. Um, Speaking of bo about book, we, I, I think it's going to be actually a good segue um, uh, to questions. There's, there's a few questions that people asked over Twitter and uh, Facebook, I believe. Sure. Um, and there is actually a question about book from Junior Gimeno. That was a Facebook question. What books or whatever do you feel helped you the most with creating your book? I mean, from storytelling, ri uh, writing point of view, as well as, as well as visuals. Visuals would probably just be um, like growing up. I loved Mobius mm -hmm. and the Met like uh, Juan Gimenez. The, his Meta Barons books are are just ridiculous. Um, like when I think my panel is like really detailed or my pages are really detailed, I look at Wanga and I'm just like, fuck. Uh, Otomo, Otomo, of course, same thing. You're just like, yeah. like before I started, I I think it had been years before I looked through Akira again and I just started looking through Akira and I probably, you just get depressed. You're like, oh my God. So much work, like, <laughs> so many details. And then you look at the making just, of, the, of the movie, it was like, Oh yeah. my god, like it's all painted so like, frame by frame. Like what the hell is going on? Yeah. So like Otomo, uh Mobius, Wangi Menez, um trying to think if there's anyone else. Uh Tirada, I really love Tirada's work. Mm -hmm. Um who else was there? A lot of that kind of stuff for sure. Firm for or uh Nausicaa, the it's just like five million pages. Uh, from a story selling standpoint is very good. Um, but for like script and all that kind of stuff, I definitely write a lot of script books. I think a lot of filmmaking books, like what makes a good movie, what makes a good story. Right. Uh, I don't know if I have any of the books offhand. Um, one of the other ones that was helpful was like going back to like Edith Hamilton's mythology books, Joseph Campbell's uh, Here With a Thousand Faces. Um, just going back to all these kind of like here are the foundations of storytelling and trying to just think about that a bit more. Cause at the beginning it's just all visual. Cause I know, you know, we're artists. So I was like, I want two red characters and an orange character. And I'm just thinking like that, like these are the visuals I want my movie to look like, but then it's like, okay, who are they? What do they have to say? What, what is their struggles? What are the, the story arcs of all these things here are like the, the five story threads that I'm putting out into the world that are going to intertwine and, and come back to each other on the end yeah. um, and you start thinking about and planning all that stuff out as you're doing it but a lot of those books are helpful a lot of them though do try to push you down a formula which I didn't want to do but it was helpful to understand what those structures and formulas are right um, even if I kind of wanted to avoid some of it as much as I can um, trying to think of anything else I think just a lot of it is just being aware of the things I love and the kind of things I want to make and just trying to absorb as much of that as possible. But a lot of those kind of books, like script writing books and storytelling books were helpful just because I'm such, I'm basically like starting at yeah. zero for all that stuff. So I wanted to understand how all that side works and what those guys do, how they think, 
Um, Cause if we try to watch a movie and analyze, sometimes we just, we just start watching the movie and we're not thinking and analyzing anymore. Yeah. So it's helpful to read a lot of books like that. And oftentimes it is where you, you read something and you have that, like, ah, the, and yeah. it seems like the yeah. easiest thing. Like once you read it, you realize like th that's not really that difficult, but you would never come up with that idea or you would never think that that's how it's supposed to be structured. Yeah. Uh, even though it seems like it's an easy way. And then once you get to a production part of it, you kind of lose that sight again and you have to remind yourself, okay, I have to think about the structure, about those things. You yeah. Know, the story arc, the characters to a certain degree, obviously, you know, um, it's almost like it is helpful though, because like a lot of the early stuff in those books, it's like, what is the tagline of your movie? Yeah. And it's just like, if you can't answer that, you're just like, Oh fuck. <laughs> yeah. Or what is What is like the synopsis of your movie? And you're just like, Oh, what well it it's complicated. Uh, you know, then mm. you probably don't have a good story or you, you haven't really thought about it enough. Uh, it was interesting to read, like, because I, I remember hearing Fury Road didn't have a script at all. Um, and it was just all like visual storyboards. And I think the only thing they did was George Miller had a, he basically just had this, this like, out, like this, this, this little like fairy tale that he wrote basically. And, and when you read it, you can find it online. I think it's like one of the first pages of the art of the book. And it's basically George Miller writing this like little fairy tale. And when you read it, you're just like, fuck, that's perfect. Like that's, it's like the evil warlord has his princesses and he keeps them. And it's just like a very kind of told like this, right. but it's like the exact big themes of the whole movie that are underlying all of the action and everything that's happening. You're just like, you can just write it very simply like that. And that can be the big things of your whole, whole story. And it can work as this little fairy tale. Yeah. And then no matter how much stuff you add on top of it, that underlying like simple structure is there. And it's was, it was very interesting to see because I, I, I thought that movie worked out so well. Um, <laughs> so it's interesting to, to read more and analyze how, how that one got made. Yeah, but I feel it takes like a George Miller. A George kind Miller person, genius yeah, to, to, to pull yeah. that off. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't think an average person would be able to do that. It would fall apart without yeah. the script. Yeah. Um, yeah, but that's, that's good. I agree. Uh, second question comes from Franco Carlissimo. Car Carlissimo, I, th I think I'm pronouncing it correctly. Um, he's wondering where the ideas, uh, where the idea for the book came from, which is kind of similar to the other question. And then how hard it was to work on the sequential art and then go from storytelling to one keyframe to a comic? Uh, idea was, um, basically like kind of out of what we kind of talked yeah. about earlier was like, I'm not seeing the movies or thing I want right. out there. So I want to make that thing instead of, you know, complaining on Twitter all day or something. Um, a lot of it was just that it's like all this stuff. Like I love star Wars. I love Marvel movies. I love all this stuff, but there's certain things I want to see that aren't being made that I feel like I, from where I grew up and what I have to say, I feel like I can create something unique that I want to consume. I don't know if everyone else will want right. to enjoy this, but I need to do it as a person, as an artist, I guess. I just There's a need inside of me that needs to put this out there. And a lot of it just came from that, uh, wanting to tell my own stories and going from just doing production work for movies or making a single... I mean, we're trained to just do like a single self-contained image and then maybe we skip ahead to like the ending yeah. of the movie and have to do an image of that. So that was incredibly hard. It's like a giant Rubik's Cube or jigsaw puzzle that's always changing. And, you know, there's like five things that all need to work together. Like maybe this painting's good, yeah. but that painting's not right. And then it ruins the whole page. And, I, you know, that's it's hugely challenging and I still struggle with it while I'm finishing the book to make sure everything looks great. Um, and it's definitely the hardest part, you know, like maybe one page is good, but then the next page you messed up something yeah. and it doesn't flow right. Or there's too many of these kind of panels and there's not enough breathing room for this moment. And you kind of have to plan ahead of just like, I usually try to plan ahead in like five to 10 page chunks, but even then usually it ends up being like about five pages that I make sure work well together. Right. So the, re the reading experience is, is nice. And there's like, Maybe there's a lot of action, but then there's a, a moment of pause and breathing room for the, the reader. Uh, so a lot of that was a learning experience, just understanding 
how it's going to be read and make sure there's a nice flow to dialogue, make sure there's a nice flow to the images to match up with the dialogue. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of work. I remember, again, when I started, you think, oh, this is so easy. I could do that. <laughs> And then when you start, you're just like, oh, yeah, my everything God. looks easy on the surface. Yeah. Until you have to what do did it. I do? Yeah. Um, but it's been the, probably the most fun and re rewarding thing I've ever done. Um, just having something that I created all myself. Yeah. And, because of um, scale of it too, right? Like it's not, again, like... If, it's like a whole movie. Right. It's like if one person made Avatar. It's like if one person wrote Avatar, directed Avatar, yeah. did all the production. Like it's... When you think of like as an artist on the movie, it's a lot of work. Yeah. But then if you think about doing everyone else's job, you're just like, oh my god. Yeah. Um, it can get out starts, of hand real quick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Your your brain starts exploding a bit, but yeah. I I don't know. I like that. It's like we only have one life. We're not going anywhere. I I, I don't know who told this to me, but it, like, like when I was like freaking out about how long it's gonna take. And they were just like, the time's going to pass anyway. You know, yeah. if you do it or you don't, those two years are going to go by. By the end of it, you could have a book or you can have nothing. You know, yeah. we're still going to get, we can't stop time. So if you really think this is cool, why not? You know, that's, a, that's not a bad way to spend two years. Um, <laughs> that's correct. Uh, you know, like I, I look back at um, some, some of the past years uh, of, you know, what I was doing and developing and whatnot and, one of the things you realize pretty quickly is like, you know, there's always this daunting task of learning something or doing something that especially, you know, it's going to take time and you feel like, oh man, like it's going to take at least a couple of months to do this or learn the software or, you know, or if I want to do my book, oh man, it's going to take like years. Yeah. And, and it's such a discouraging feel where it's like, ah, oh, like I, I, you know, it's like, I want, I want the reward yes, now. <laughs> yes, correct. I want the reward now, but I don't, I don't want to wait yeah. a year for this reward. And like, I have nothing to show. And it's like, you know, and in the, in the process of it, it's like, I might, I might have some snippets that, um, that might be rewarding or, or whatever, but most of the time you've, you're going to feel disappointed about, you know, what's going on. And eventually you're going to reach that point where it's like, oh man, like I actually, I cannot believe that I've made made so made it that far, you know. I had that moment last year, like the end of the uh, the end of 2019, when um, you know I, I'm making my 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 little short thing uh, for mm -hmm. Showtime, and I think I made a decision to do that in June last year, something like that, maybe 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 a little earlier than that, and you know I thought about the idea, what I want to do, and you know started cutting it and putting together like a uh, you know, um, rip, rip -o matic and like, uh, the storyboard for what it's going to be, you know, how it's going to flow. And I looked at it like, ah, oh, yeah, I can, I can totally do it. Once I started doing it, it's like, oh my God, it's going to take forever. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Same experience. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I had to, I had like weeks of weeks of time where I wouldn't touch it because it was just too daunting. Like I, there's no way I can finish this thing. I've never done anything like that before, uh, but I keep kept chipping away. Like if I found those moments where it's like I need to do at least twenty minutes of it, you yeah, know, yeah. today. And and <coughs> weekend comes in. I, am I gonna play a video game or or spend like extra time on this? And yep. then towards the end of the year, I actually took a little bit of time off. I had like a, a good stretch of uh, vacation time where it's like. You know what? I'm gonna spend this on, 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 you know, putting as much work as I can do, and I couldn't believe how much was done by the end of it. Um, and I look back, you know, probably the amount of time I've spent on on the film already uh, is more than I would than you know some of some of the work that I've done already. I'm proud of. Um, but yeah, I felt I, I felt that very moment where it passed a certain threshold. It was like. I can totally see the uh, the end of a tunnel, and the light of yeah, the like yeah. the light in the tunnel, right? I can totally see that that that's it's it's in there. Still, like a lot of a lot of mileage to go, but yeah. And then you look at look back at at at, at something that's like if you ask yourself a very simple question and you answer it to yourself, what if I only spent an hour a day on this thing, right? Only an hour. Well, within a week, it's going to be seven hours. 
that's yeah. a whole day of work already think how much you can do in the whole day of work if you like really focus down and do a seven hours straight of like yeah. really productive work a lot and then a month later that's that's four days that's a whole week you know times that, that it just adds up real quick and and you think like oh it's two years but if you break it down to an hour a day that's four days a month that's like what uh the math comes in <laughs> Yeah, it just it just compounds really fast. <laughs> a lot of uh, hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it compounds like super quick. It's like what forty eight, right? Forty eight days. That's one and a half months of working every day on something. That's what most mm -hmm. of the projects are. Like you, you, yeah. you, you get a freelance project, and then mm -hmm. within a year you have a month and a half work done. Uh, you know, and that's like think about learning software how much you could if you yeah. learn full time if you like i want to learn um blender and you spend full time a month and a half man you would be freaking good at it yeah you know if you learned every every day just doing every single thing like yeah. it it adds up even like me i just even if i don't have time like i'll just tinker with some little thing for like 30 minutes before bed like oh how do, i wonder if i could do that yeah. and then you learn something new, you're like oh and then i use it at work the next day or something and you're always adding like keeping your ear to the ground like oh what's that yeah what you know follow some some artists who are doing like plugins and you just start picking up stuff instead of going on twitter or something to like hear some crazy drama news or something from news, politics man. it's just it's like such a waste of time. i make sure to kind of like follow all the things that will make me better and so like when i scroll down my feed it's just like cool art blender plugins yeah. all this kind of, it's like filtering your filtering your environment to help you grow in the ways that you want to grow. Um, yeah. It's definitely helpful. Otherwise it's so easy to get distracted now. A hundred percent. It's, it's, it's annoying. Uh, like I don't read, I stopped basically paying attention to any news and literally unfollowed everyone who, who posts news on my yeah. feed. Like, yeah. You have to I just, I don't have time for this. Or so anyone who posts like too much stuff about that's not relevant to what I want to learn. Like yeah, your dinner, it's like, your I'm, dinner I, pictures, I don't, I don't care. I'm still, fr I'm still friends with you, but I just, this is not helping yeah. my life uh, that I want to learn right now. Yeah. Uh. Um, there's another question from Ab Abhishek, uh, at Abhishek's art. Uh, he asked, or she, uh, other than ArtStation, DeviantArt, and Rookies, where can I send my portfolio? Uh, I don't know if you'd send yeah. your portfolio, or like post your work, maybe. Right. Like... Uh, um, CG Society still pretty old legacy thing. I, I same with DeviantArt. I still find CG Society art pops up really big on on Google when people search for art, um, or at least my images pop up. Like when I see like what art, it's like CG Society is very high up there. Um, what else is there? Social media, right? I, I guess that's Social media, Facebook. Yeah, your Facebook have a Twitter, have an Instagram. Behance. Um, yeah, yeah, that one too. Um, what is else? Tumblr still there, or is it dead already? It is. <laughs> Wait, what happened? It's like they like, they decided to they sold they sold it for four billion to Yahoo or whatever. Yeah. Yahoo eliminated porn and then it died. And they <laughs> it devalued it devalued the company so much that they just sold it for like ten million or something. <laughs> Without porn, your story. network is yeah. worth ten million dollars. <laughs> That's so crazy. It's so weird. <laughs> That horse, that 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 whole uh, storyline of of Tumblr, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess social media would be big, especially now. Yeah, just making sure to be active. Um, just, I don't know. It's like another reason I wanted to make my thing is just like people love storytelling. Yeah. People love stories, and even you, as an artist, posting your work is a story. You know, people see people can go down and like, wow, this person started with just like squiggles on a piece of paper. And now look at all the cool stuff that people want to see progression and a story. Yeah. Work in um, progress, how it's how it's and so along. So even if you don't think maybe you're you're just starting or whatever, people like to see that, you know, even like a lot of these tech YouTuber guys who review products like um, I forget the guy's name. But he just started like if you scroll down, it's like 10 years of his life. And it's just like this little kid 
talking about cereal in his mom's kitchen and now he's like doing interviews with Elon Musk or something. It's like crazy. Like right. people, people love to see that, you know, it's like, how did, who is this guy? And then you go down you're like, Oh my God, he started from just like in his mom's kitchen, like with a little t-shirt on it, like with a crappy camera from yeah. like the nineties or something like oh, is, is it yeah, people MKB? love, people love is that. that. Is that the guy? MKB? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. He's doing like tech reviews. Yeah, that guy's that yeah, guy's yeah. fascinating. Yeah. I I yeah. I I've, I've, I remember because I I looked at, looked into him as well. Like because he's he does such a you know if you want to learn about tech, uh, he's like yeah. a really really interesting person to to look look at his channel because like he does like really well. Um, the presentation of things is amazing, yeah. right? Like he's just he just does really really good presentation. He finds like really interesting gadgets too. Um, but I remember see, like seeing his video, like you said, like just dumb on the camcorder and upload it to YouTube yeah. when it first came out. It's just like, oh man, like that's such a journey. But again, to not, to not delete that, just like yeah. leave it there. Like, no, I want to show people yeah. where I came from. Like, it's awesome, man. Um, it's just inspiring to see, like, again, it's just like he started doing something he wanted to do and he just kept at yep. it. And over time, it's just like, wow, this is like a really streamlined show and each time you're just trying to improve and yeah. um but maybe you know when when youtube came out none of us thought that was like how how could any of us had anticipated that could be a thing yeah exactly you know? but he was just like i'm gonna do this i want to do this this is fun it used to be you like know? and you just stuck with it crappy low-res videos like i think daily motion and there was like vimeo that had yeah. way better <laughs> quality like, like why would you ever post on youtube and now like look yeah. at where youtube youtube is you know compared to other platforms that just decided not to I guess Vimeo is like still considered to be like the professional yeah. platform, right? Or for like film directors, directors or direct, filmmakers yeah, exactly. or something. Yeah, it's like um, a, where you when you want to have a reel or post your film. Like director's portfolio, yeah, yeah director's it's portfolio really showing the highest quality mm -hmm. of their thing. Um, really well, well regarded in that way. Like if you send a Vimeo, Vimeo yeah. link to like a director's reel, like your own short film or something, like people like, oh yeah, like, uh, yeah it's a Vimeo. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, I'd say those as many sites as you can, basically, yeah. for promoting your work. And um, yeah, for the graphic novel stuff, probably uh, something that's easy to scroll. I mean, you can just make one big post on ArtStation and just people can read. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then Webtoons or Tapas. There's a couple other ones, but those are pretty good for um, mobile. But you just got to reformat yeah. and restructure it for that, for that audience. Yeah. Uh, and the last question I'm going to read is from at Castromo. Um, most important step for you and I guess myself starting an image, mental visualization or sketching research for ideas. How, how do you start your images? Like, what do you think is the most important step before you, you know, get your headphones on and and like really focus on, on producing probably what the intent of it is like especially if it's like for a movie i'll usually read the script or whatever and i want to understand like what are the characters feeling like what kind of moment is that like you read you read the script and you're like an image pops in your head like oh this is like this is like that moment in uh seven or something when this menacing thing happen or when the, the alien was over right. looking over the prisoner in alien three and i want this really scary dramatic feeling to happen in this scene and i can have a reference point in my head or an image pops in my head of just like it's that i i can tell the moment they're going for and i have a really good starting point of what they probably want and even from a color or lighting standpoint i kind of can get a vibe of what they're going after yeah um yeah usually that just the context and intent of the thing I need to make. And then it usually kind of falls together after that. Um, then it's like, oh, maybe I'll use 3D for this, or maybe I'll use that for that. Maybe find reference images of this and start assembling and grading. Yeah, <clears throat> I agree. Like when you work on the film, uh, you usually get like an idea which part of the script that is uh, talking with production designer or director get an impression like what needs to be expressed in that piece or design and then you just get down to it but if you're working on the personal piece yeah like what's the intent uh what i really want to achieve with that one especially if it's a longer uh like a graphic novel or, or short film yeah. sure 
or like a sequence of images like what's the idea behind it you know uh yeah maybe you want to do like a sequence of images of a character that's that's what that's what basically showtime was yeah. for me for most of the time i just like i i had this idea for those characters in that world and i really what i wanted to do is just explore them in different situations and what they are and kind of learn about uh, you know what those characters are for me. Um, yeah, it could be could be anything. Um, I think it's very personal, right? Uh, at the end of the day, like it just depends on who you are and what really inspires you. Uh, you know, what matters the most is like what kind of results you're gonna have at the end of it. And if mm. if uh, sketching is what will get you there quickest, quickest, yeah. and it will get the be the best results, that's what you should do. Um, if it's thinking about you know the intent or you know doing research like oh, yeah I, I don't think it matters much like it matters that you do something in order to get the best out of it and sometimes it might just be uh you trying things out and see what works best you know um, yeah that too experimentation as well like um for the graphic novel towards the end i started experimenting like i got into blender and octane and stuff so there was a way i was doing things on pencil and paper to block out and plan things out. But then later on, I allowed myself to be a little more open to experimentation where I was like, maybe I can sculpt this weird forest thing in medium and then put it into octane and just start moving around the scene and finding really interesting compositions. And I started to, I feel like that helped the project, uh, I got much more dramatic camera angles that I probably would would have been too scared to draw right. by hand. Um, I could block out scenes. I, could, I sculpted some basic characters so I could say, okay, I want this fight scene to happen and I could get really dramatic angles. And you don't feel like you're wasting your time because you're just, you know, you press render for like two seconds and you're not like spending an hour detailing a drawing and be like, mm, maybe that wasn't right. I could make it a little better and redrawing it. Yeah. You, there's very little time being wasted. So I feel like that was really helpful for planning especially like 10 pages of a crazy fight scene or something i can really edit that down and just like no that's not i don't like that page because i'm not i don't have much attachment to it because i didn't spend that much time right. so i can really edit down the best tightest storytelling doing it that way whereas before maybe i would have been too precious with it like oh but i drew that and i spent a day yeah doing the pencil work and i don't want to change it and i feel like mixing things up with all these new tools helps uh sometimes lead to a better re result in a more efficient way um so being open to experimentation is yeah. also pretty good I, I do like to mix up mix up things every now and then you know like not starting the same way i'm starting all the time yeah. like maybe hey like maybe i'll start with 3d this time or maybe i'll just sketch something with pencils you know um or just like put like a collage of images that I feel like are inspiring or maybe read a book. Like there's always yeah. different ways. And like, as you said, like not being, uh, not getting yourself too comfortable with what you do and always yeah. like to just throw in like something new, like a wrench into a cog where it's just like, it's always going to put it, put everything to a screeching halt and make you rethink and, and, yeah. and reorganize the way you work just for that one time. And see, hey, like maybe that's exactly what I needed to come up with something new, you know? Um, yeah, it's interesting. Like, I wonder, um, I always would wonder about that. Like, can like can something great happen without a lot of stress and struggle? Like, if everyone is really comfortable and happy, can like like if I was comfortable and happy at all the jobs I worked at, I probably would never make my own stuff right. because I was so happy at the job, you know? Like. I don't think is it you always would appreciate birthed? it, right? Without the struggle and like being exhausted. <laughs> yeah, like is it? Yeah, is it always come out of that place of maybe unhappiness or like just there's something you're not getting everything. That's another thing. I, I feel like I've never been a hundred percent happy at any job. Like there's right. always certain levels. Of, like maybe I'm twenty percent happy or like or or like creatively satisfied. I guess I would say I know like what you mean. like okay, this movie is amazing. <laughs> But these are there's these problems or something or creatively maybe it's not great but the pay is great yeah or it's always like these these different tiers of things and I guess that every project at the end of the day always ends up coming down to it's someone else's and it's gonna be whatever they want and so 
I, I just want that at least for the book, I wanted to do everything myself. I didn't want to, because there's a lot of opportunities like, oh, I can have my, I can work with my friend and I know he does these cool characters or something. And I really wanted the book to be 100% me. But then if anything else happens, I, I kind of am willing to let it go and just like collaborate if we make a movie or something else. Um, like that's my, I'm ready to let it go yeah. because I got that out of my system in the book. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Um... Yeah, to me, it's like you, uh, there, there has to be some kind of struggle for you to appreciate it. There, you just cannot yeah. do it all the time, all the, all the good all the time. Even if it's the project, even if everything works in the project and it turns out to be a, a great thing and you're super happy with it, there's almost certain that you're going to, one of your next projects is going to suck one way or another. And I'm just curious about that. Yeah, like, <coughs> I feel like, Jesus, like on movies, like. <laughs> <laughs> like on movies um i remember a couple of movies like everyone was so happy and the work work kind of was really kind of no, not really relaxed but it wasn't like i didn't feel like everyone was stressed out right and a movie kind of turned out okay and then other movies that i felt like everyone was stressed out sometimes it turns out great like i heard mad max was like nobody knew what was going on and everything was crazy but then the final result is amazing yeah. like blade runner 2049 i, I think that wasn't too great like felt like i don't feel like people were like crazy stressed out on that one but then it turned out amazing too like like does it have to be some crazy asshole director yelling at everyone to make it great or can it be really kind of laid back and everyone does a great job or does it have to be some intense pressure cooker to make something great but then i've also seen stuff turn out terrible in that kind of environment yeah it's almost um, as many layers as a, a very unorganized artist would have <laughs> you know <laughs> uh in their photoshop files um i don't know yeah i i feel like y you have to have a struggle every now and then at least one way or another and if 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 not then you're not gonna appreciate it as much like if you're happy all the time then you're gonna become numb to do things that would normally make you really happy if you had struggles in between you know and i feel that you know i I had my moment. I, I have my moments uh, every now and then where I, I feel like I'm depressed in a way. It's like oh, I don't think it's, it's going it's going well. But I think it's a most of the time it's a mindset um, where you know I, I think the biggest problem with social media and and looking at uh, the expectations of of others <laughs> is that sure. you know you're supposed to be happy. You know, like what's the meaning of life? Is being happy. I don't know if that's the case. Like, if if, if the meaning of 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 you, uh, of of everything you create is to be happy all the time, you're gonna get numb to it, and then it's gonna be harder to yeah. find another thing that makes you happy. And then if it's not going your way, then you're not happy, and then you're like, oh, like I lost the meaning of life all of a sudden because I'm not happy. You know what I mean? I think, uh, you know, I, I'm kind of parroting. Uh, what uh, Jordan Peterson was saying in his book, 12 Rules of Life. I, I've read it. It's, uh, it's, a, it's, a really, it's a really good like book to kind of like, w when you read it, you kind of step back and like tr start to think about yourself a little bit, you know? Hmm. Like you're, if, if, you're, if your head is in the right place, if you're like, if you have, if the idea of like what, that, what life is for you, especially if you have those moments where you're not happy, you know, it kind of helps you to sort of like find yourself and 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 find those uh, um, ideas for yourself. You know, in a way, I kind of kind of walk around words. Yeah, here. I mean, but you need to like that's like 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 I was saying when I traveled for three years. Like, you gotta have a life. You gotta yeah. go out and experience the world, and you're gonna get in some trouble. Sometimes shit goes really bad, yeah. and you gotta figure it out. And but that's what makes us who we are. Like overcoming these obstacles defines our character and who we are as a person and that makes us stronger and gives us more yeah. of a experience in our life and that's all things that goes right back into our work or whatever and things to draw from uh, our experiences in our life um, but for me I find like I guess over the years is just having some sort of purpose that I'm a hundred percent like on board with like like I'm gonna make this big book and it's going to take multiple years and every day it's going to be a struggle, but it's all towards a big goal right. and I control a hundred percent of everything of it and no one else can touch it or take it away from me. For me, that is like, 
it's not always happy, but it's like this is provides a meaning to my life that has a clear beginning, middle, and end. And when it's done, I can do another one right. or something. Like I, I can do this the rest of my life and I will have a lot of things to do. And it provides, it's always building towards something greater. Maybe one's done, but when I finish the second one, it's also building a second brick in a bigger house of all these things that I'm putting out into the world that'll be there when I'm dead or whatever. Um, like having some sort of purpose that you love that you can do the rest of your life for me, that is, that's, that's it for me. Like that is, yeah. uh, some sort of meaning that you're adding to every day that has a beginning, middle and end when it's done, there's another one you can do yeah. that never ends, but it provides such a deep satisfaction. Um, finding that for yourself, I think is a huge thing for any anyone's life like, maybe it's not art or whatever but you find that thing for you whatever that might be um and just do that right it's almost like that cliche thing that people say it's about the journey not the not the not the destination in a way sure yeah. but it, it really isn't it's about the destination and then once you reach that then finding a next destination and and really soaking in the journey because the journey itself is going to be difficult you know but yeah, uh, I think that's another thing too. Yeah, it's like another thing too is good to take like probably most people won't say this, but like good to take breaks. Um, like no breaks, man. Work twenty four seven. Like <laughs> like uh, like from Art Center to the four years at Weta, it was like twenty four seven, right? And Weta because it's like island life a little slower, I could recover a bit, right? But I was still working, and then traveling for me was like my recover. It's like I was going a thousand miles an hour in my car and the gas is out. You can't go forever. Yeah. You know, there's, you have to fill up the, the gas, you know, you have to take a break, fill up the gas tank, recharge before and figure out, you know, get your map out and figure out where you're going to go next. And then you have a much better, you'll, you'll much more efficiently be able to go where you want to go and have the energy to go there. Um, after you had taken that adjustment period and break to to think about things. Because I, I have friends who were in a situation I was before I started, I took that break, and they're like, man, I don't even want to sit down and art, make art anymore. I'm so sick of working. And I'm like, yeah, yeah you just, you got to, for sure. You got to, if you keep, if you push through that and just work, you're going to burn out and you're never going to want to be, you're never going to want to do this anymore. Yeah. Um, there's definitely been a few moments where I was almost on that verge where it's like, I need, I need to get, eight hours or more sleep every night. I need to not do anything on the weekends, <laughs> even though I want to um, try to have a normal life. It gets, get a lot of sleep um, because if all we do is stay plugged into the system where we feel like guilty for not working or something. And I think it's really important to those three years of kind of traveling and seeing the world and filling up my brain with uh, experiences and sights and things. Um, that was my recovery. And now I, you know, when I came back to settle down, was like, I'm ready to hit the gas pedal down a hundred percent and go again. But I needed that time. If I, if I had just done that, it would have, it would have been really bad. Yeah. Um, finding, finding, um, finding time to reward yourself, whatever that would be. Like if you're a type of person that you, you want to travel, and that's your reward and you should definitely find time to do that if you like to hang out with friends and not do or play video games as your reward for like working real hard that's definitely a way to go you know i i actually met people that their 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 reward is to work really hard to achieve something and then have more flexibility to find something even harder that they can take more risks and do something yeah, else yeah. that is going to be even more difficult, even more challenging, even more, you know, time consuming, but more risky instead, like this time sure. around, right? So they're doing this thing that they're maybe for them is a really hard to do because it's not as rewarding, quote unquote, because they, it's not as challenging. But by virtue of doing that, they, they find something else that is, you know, that is meeting that requirement of challenge. It was a person mm -hmm. uh, I worked with, um, probably the richest person I've ever worked with, <laughs> that had that has a mindset like that. 
that that that's his goal like he wants to mm. create like his idea is to create businesses and making them really successful and that's what drives him and it's not about creating mm. one thing it's about creating almost like a portfolio of things and and, yeah. and you know by virtue of doing that having a lot of people being employed and and changing lives a lot of, of a lot of people that otherwise would be in the different industries or would not have fun working on that 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 uh, venture you know so um i guess what i'm trying to say is like yeah like finding a reward but not necessarily following someone else's path not necessarily sure. thinking that oh because ben mora or mache kuchara or vitali or ashtorp said that that that's the that's you know we we, we preach and you listen like that you have to take sure. everything in through your personal lens yeah. right yeah find your path um yeah. For me, a lot of it is just like what has inspired you. Like what, like for me, someone like um, Hao Miyazaki, his his film legacy is amazing. Like those are gonna last. Like we're gonna show our children that yeah. our children are gonna show their children. Like that's gonna that has touched touched and affected my life. Those stories and films, and they are gonna continue to do that for generation after generation. That is an incredible thing. To me, yeah. that I would love to try to do in in my own way, um, and it was interesting to hear his hear his story because you know, I kind of I feel like I started late making my own things, but he was an animator working on other films until he was like forty. So he didn't start he didn't start on Nausicaa until he was forty, and that began his film directorial career, quite quite like middle middle of his life, you know. Um, so that was really inspiring to see, like never too late. But again, he, but because of that, again having life experience, he has a huge life of experiences to draw from right. to put into those characters and those stories. Which I feel like, if he was younger, maybe that wouldn't have happened, and maybe the stories wouldn't have been as deep and and meaningful. Um, so again, everything is nothing is wasted, and everything happens for a reason. And you know, just because maybe you start late you have a lot of things that someone starting younger doesn't have to draw from, to put in your work that yeah. will, that younger artist will need to take that time to come to those conclusions that you already have. So I wouldn't get discouraged if you're starting late or something um, because you have a lot of things that you might not think. Yeah, um, I agree. Dude, it's been almost three hours. Three and a half actually. <laughs> Uh, we've been talking. It's uh, way longer than than you would expect, right? Like time is just <laughs> flying. Holy, holy crap! Uh, yeah, that was a that was a really fun conversation, man. We yeah, covered a lot of grounds, and uh, it's uh, it's it's really it's really nice to catch up because we haven't talked in a while. Yeah, sure. I mean, we like yeah. it's kind of funny. Like you get to know so many artists, and you know some of them you become friends with, uh, you meet them every now and then, but then like because you get busy with your own life and just so much going yeah. on it's like it's yeah those moments where you catch up i actually met with david levy we were talking about it about him um like a month ago i think yeah, a month and a mm -hmm. half uh he was in la and uh it was so fun to catch up you know because like we're good friends you know we talk every now and then but like we get busy with our lives family and and projects and yeah and it, it's interesting there's some people you know for years you talk with but the first time you meet, even though you're neighbors almost, like that was with me and David. Like we were actually living living like a couple of blocks away from <laughs> one another for like a year, but we never found time to actually like meet. And then the first time we met was at THU in Portugal. And I was like, mm -hmm. what the hell we're doing with our <laughs> lives, man? <laughs> uh, but you get boggled down with, you know. Yeah, it's tough. We all, we all kind of get our yeah. head you know, put our heads down and are just focused too much on our own stuff. And Being yeah, it's good to, <laughs> it's good to catch up and yeah. again, have, have a life. It's good to have, a, yeah. <laughs> try to have a life when you can. Um, man, that was a fun one. Again, though. by the end, it's like, it's like by the end, like we're, we're all going to die. And it's like, I find our friends and those relationships and experiences are kind of what matter and stick with us the most. And, um, it's important. It's important. Yeah, yeah. I agree. We do gonna die, all of us. 
but yeah. uh, let's, let's let's be positive. Unless we crack, <laughs> unless we crack the AI like copying our brain, or like there's the some technologies coming up. I think they reversed the uh, age of cells. Elon will figure it out. Uh, I think there was uh, some scientists think... that reversed the age of cells by like two years. Uh, I did. I did read that too. Yeah. I think Elon will figure it out. Yeah, Elon, Elon is a savior. <laughs> he changed already like four or five industries completely. So. Yeah. If there's a person that, that can do it, that's him. Yeah. Uh, cool. Let's wrap it up. Uh, I, yeah, for sure. I apologize to everyone who was listening for my coughing. I actually had a flu uh, right after Christmas break. It was just the most horrible time, but uh, slowly recovering. So hopefully with the next episode, I'm not going to be like <laughs> dying in front of the microphone. Um, but yeah, let's wrap it up. Every, uh, thanks yeah, for sure. everyone f uh, for listening to the show. And uh, thanks, Ben, thanks, for being, being here. Thank you for having me. Yep. Take care, guys. Have a good one until Bye. the next one. Bye.